this is audio, I don't have, I don't have enough power to actually power the audio through the system, so we're going to have to use a lab for the audio for the DS. Okay. Other than that, you have a pain, right? Yes. We have a $10 donation from Oku, donating for the Worcester speedrun. I watched it on YouTube and was really impressed by the math that must have been done behind all of it. I also think SDA is working for a noble cause. Thanks for the marathon. Have a ten dollar donation from Anonymous. I have such a family history with cancer. Grandmother, two aunts, one uncle all died from various types. My sister is a survivor of non Hodgkin's lymphoma and was blessed with an experimental procedure that worked. Mother is also a survivor of thyroid cancer. Keep up the great work. This is a great cause and I look forward to supporting you in the future. have a $20 donation from James Rodriguez. Worcester, you made me actually send my alarm on my school break. I hope you realize how much I like watching you if I'm willing to do that. Hashtag based Gumi, hashtag based Chatot, and shout outs to Klefki, the best key related Pokemon. We have a $50 donation from the Asian loner. You guys made me late to work this morning, London time. The Twitch app on my phone seems to be running continuously until its battery completely depletes. And so my alarm didn't turn on, making me three hours late. Despite my embarrassing morning, I have to thank you for the wonderful cause I've been watching for two years. Now thanks to Cosmo and have learnt about many other amazing gamers like you. Good luck.
Sure. You, you've been there already. Yeah. Uh, when, when you have none. I have to delete the save file because otherwise I won't be able to save during the run and I need to. This game is very slow at all save data, so this will take like half a minute. You weren't kidding. <laughs> It goes on. Uh, a regular save in this game takes 12 seconds. Um, if you add an extra item to the menu, it says saving a lot of data, and that takes 18 seconds. It's pretty bad. Oh, I haven't timed this one. I lost my patience. <laughs> We have a $140 <laughs> donation <laughs> from <laughs> Coma. My father died of lung cancer when I was nine, and two years ago, my best friend died from cancer after a long, unsuccessful therapy. Both have left their mark on me. Here's roughly 100 euro to help prevent this from happening to others. Oh, do I know the, um, the trainer name? Yeah. And the name um, Mr. MV. Mr. MV. Um, and the Cyndaquil name was... Grove. Grove. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Three, two, one, go. Oh, Jesus. All right. <laughs> this is a <laughs> nice start. All right. So this is uh, Soul Silver. This is uh, any percent, which, as some of you may know by now, hopefully you do, it's just beat the game as fast as you can. Uh, throughout the Pokemon community, I guess the more main category is any percent glitchless through just about every game, which is just tradition from playing Red Blue because the any percent of that game is literally zero, zero, zero. Um, but this run, especially for this game, oh Jesus, lower. Okay, is much, much better. Uh, simply because, it, like, you get to see the fun of breaking the game, but at the same time, it does stay very traditional to the game. Like, the, you get to see all the battles, none of them are broken, and you cannot argue that this run is much, much more difficult. The world record currently for this run is 2 hours, 55 minutes, and 48 seconds, and it has 6 deaths in it. Every other Pokemon run is pretty much, it's like, you know, going down to the seconds trying to optimize, but this run is incredibly difficult to just even complete, which uh, doesn't bode well for a marathon run, but hopefully it'll go pretty well. Uh, so the game does start off pretty slow. Uh, your walking speed is ridiculously bad in this game. This game runs at 30 FPS, and you walk at eight frames per tile, which is very, very slow. You run at four and you bike at two, which is pretty nice, but it does start out pretty bad. Uh, so I could be stuck at the very beginning for quite some time, actually, because I need a Cyndaquil with very, very, very good stats. I won't be too strict because I don't want to be stuck here forever, but I <laughs> definitely need to have 12 special attack on Cyndaquil, which uh, my IV needs to be 20 to 31 to get 20 special attack. Ideally, I have speed of 12 plus as well, which requires uh, 10 plus in the IV. 
if I get an IV of 30 or 31, it goes to 13. I'm going to set the options before I save as well. Oh, geez, this touch screen is a bit off. That's all right. So I'm going to save here because I don't want to replay through the intro all the time. But yeah, this takes 18 seconds. Uh, ideally, my attack is 11 as well, but it doesn't matter too much. My defenses also matter in this run. It's ridiculous how much they matter, like every single stat. But like I said, I'm looking for hopefully 12 special attack and 12 speed. If I can get a 13 in either of them, it's, it helps a lot. It makes a lot of the battles uh, go a lot quicker. What's my name? Goro. Okay. I guess I should explain. An IV is just basically, uh, you know, the hidden stat that tells you how good your actual stats are. And once they're set, uh, the level ups in this game aren't random. So you need to get them high, you know, right at the start. And you can tell they're going to be high later on throughout the game as well. That is actually good. I can roll with that first go. So that's actually really nice. So my nature was lax, which is plus defense minus special defense. It's Pretty irrelevant. It is going to make a few fights easier and a few fights harder. Uh, attack wasn't good. It was 10, so it's in the lower half. Uh, like I said, special attack was 11, so it's between 20 to 31. And speed is 12, which is between 10 and 29. So I can definitely work with this. I'm very happy I got that first go, actually. That can take forever. There's a few very minor things that I could talk about, like right here. I made sure to walk down on that first tile there instead of turning to the right because for whatever reason when your movement is stopped in this goes for pretty much every Pokemon game if you turn on the first tile that you move you waste uh, it, I think it's four frames in this game to turn around but if you continue going in that direction and then turn around you don't waste any time at all so there's a lot of very small optimizations like that throughout the game yeah, like I said, the walking speed is pretty slow. Uh, how soon are you going to get running shoes or a bike? Uh, running shoes are very soon. Like, as soon as I get to the next town, I'll get running shoes. But the bike isn't until Golden Rod, which is, you know, roughly 50 minutes in. Okay. So it takes a while. So, yeah, like I said, I'm playing Soul Silver. Um, if you've watched my stream, you'd only have ever watched me play Heart Gold because I don't actually have a Soul Silver cart. Um, but it is better for this category uh, simply because you can catch an Ekans in this game, which you cannot do in Heart Gold. And this run, you actually need to catch a Pokemon with Intimidate, otherwise beating a Lance is literally impossible. And Ekans is a lot easier to catch than either Growlithe or Stantler, which you would have to get in Heart Gold. That is an incredibly good start, yeah, no I'm encounters seeing, all the way through. I'm seeing that. This is world record pace right here, folks. Literally RNG God. Did you seriously just clap for no encounters? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but now, nah, okay, so this guy gives you the running shoes. It's just a bit of an intro. They force on you, you know, new game, that's how it goes. Force all the intros on you. But um, I'm actually not gonna be running the whole time as soon as I get the running shoes, because when you run through the grass, the way I understand that there's actually two separate encounter tables, um, and when you run through the grass, it's like, on average, say, like, one in every eight tiles of grass, you're going to get an encounter. But when you walk, it's like one in every 20. Like, I don't actually know the exact numbers. And because they're completely separate tables, there's no direct, you know, one's double or one's half or whatever I'm trying to say. But um, you would have to walk because an encounter takes about 12 seconds. And the difference between movement is four frames, it would have to be 90 tiles equals to one encounter, and running definitely gives more than one extra encounter per 90 tiles, so it's worth walking through the grass, even though it does look pretty silly. Uh, I guess the other thing I should talk about here is if I get a wild level two encounter, I will kill it for the experience, because if you don't kill anything extra for experience, also I'm going into this apricorn house because if you don't, the guy comes out of his own house and he was like, how did you miss my house? Here's an apricorn box and it's faster for him to not come out of the house. 
But yeah, if I get a level two, I'll kill it for experience because you can to hit a level two. It's very rare, but it's worth trying. But yeah, you don't get level 14, which is when you evolve into Quilava after Faulkner, if you don't get any extra experience. And getting Quilava right after Faulkner ends up, dang, ends up saving time uh, overall. That's definitely not worth it. See, on menus during the battle, I'm generally using the touch screen because it's faster than uh, using the buttons to menu. going straight to run, but I do prefer using the buttons because the touch screen generally is a bit finicky. But yeah, two encounters to Mr. Pokemon's house is actually extremely good, so this run's going very well so far. A small world weapon piece. This battery is on red. I don't have a charger. Like... TikTok. <laughs> I just noticed, yeah. That that's not going to last two and a half hours. Who has 3DS? I'll grab it. I need, like, an extension for it. Have a $15 donation from Atra. Hey, Worcester. Up early to see a fellow Australian player play Pokemon. Game with the best soundtrack. Okay, so I put on the default running shoes there because I'm going to be running for quite some time now. And uh, the turning around, like you can miss a tile because you're pressing B to go through text as well. You don't want to be a mashing. So okay, I'm going to get level 6 off this battle and I'm going to check my stats again. If I get, I, I want to see plus 2 in like pretty much every stat, but the main ones I'm looking for, again, is special attack and speed. If I can get plus two in special attack, that's insanely good because that means my IV in special attack is 30 or 31. If I get it in speed, it means it's, oh dear, my memory. I think it's 23 plus. Jeez. Yeah, it's good. All right, this fight is actually going really well. If I can get another Leer, I won't have to heal at all. Dang, unlucky. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, sweet. Dude, pro. <laughs> Carol swag every day, man. All right. Easy. That was all planned, as always. Uh, uh, I wasn't actually paying attention to special attack. I didn't get it in speed. I think I might have got it in special attack. I'll see it at the next level, so. That's actually really unfortunate that I didn't get it in speed though, because speed is arguably actually more important than special attack in this run, because you're so underleveled for the later part of the game that you're gonna. Ha I'm think I'm gonna have to get five extra X speeds than if that had gone to 14 right there, and that's five extra turns that I can get critical than five extra turns that I can die, which is obviously not too pleasant. Okay, go back to Elm's lab. Uh, what's the rival name? I'm assuming cancer. Yeah, yeah. Alright. <laughs> no, no, no. I spelled that right, didn't I? Okay. Alright, I'm good. <laughs> Okay, so after this cutscene, I'm gonna actually use the PC at Elm's lab to heal because it's way faster than using a potion. And a bit surprisingly, regular potions are actually very important through this run. 
especially on the blue fight, your health actually has to be so specific for the blue fight, it's ridiculous. I'll talk about that more when I get there, but I'm still blown away by how ridiculous that run is, or that battle is. Okay, so after this, I need to catch a Sentret. Oh, I should probably get the Sentret's name as well. Is that Cerno? Exclamation point? Yeah, Cerno, exclamation point. All right, cheers. Ooh, that was a movement error. Eight frames down the drain. Um, oh, this is why I choose the girl for this game. Uh, if you choose the boy, uh, the girl counterpart does the catching tutorial and she messes up. Instead of actually putting you into the battle tutorial, she has Meryl jump in front of you and do it a little dance and was like, did you get it? Oh no, let me retry. And then does the battle. So it's eight seconds slower to choose the male in this game. Inferior gender, confirmed. Yeah, I mean, I choose the girl anyway, but it's nice to have a reason. So yeah, here I'm gonna be catching a Sentret. So through this grass, because you can only get a Sentret on Route 29, I'm actually gonna be running to increase the encounter rate on purpose because I still haven't um, gotten the extra experience, but I need a Sentret. And if you walk, it's very common that you'll get to the end of Route 29 and you still won't have a Sentret and you'll have to sit around like a dumbass waiting for a Sentret to show up. So yeah, I need a Sentret as a slave for Cut and Surf. It's the only Pokemon that you can get prior to needing either of those uh, HMs that you can get in the game. Which, it's nice because it's really easy to catch and it's super early on. And he gives you five free. The only Pokemon I have to catch are Sentret and Ekans, both of which are pretty easy to catch, so five should do me plenty. All right. All right, level two, so I'll go the extra experience here. I either need two very high damage rolls or for it to have a negative defense nature for the two hit to occur. It doesn't look like I'm gonna get it. Oh, that wasn't even close. Wow, okay. That's not a big deal though. It's still worth it, even if it's a three hit. It's just I only kill the level two because you can save a turn. Right. Still run, because I need to center it. Uh, the other thing I guess I should mention is you cannot get an encounter on the first two tiles after you get an encounter. Or like enter a battle or anything. So those first two tiles there, I cannot get another encounter. So after I get my Sentry, which is going to be this one, uh, I'm going to run for another two tiles. Dude, what? No. I'm going to run for another two tiles and then turn the running shoes off just to save those eight frames. Okay, this is not good though. All right, I'm gonna cut through here. Uh, see, it's three away. No, I would like to be two away. All right, there we go, that's what I'm talking about. Probably only gonna hit it once. Yes, a critical would kill it from that stage, so I'm only gonna hit it once and chuck balls from now. Because the chance, the extra chance you would get of, wow, <laughs> he goes in like 70%, that wasn't even close. Okay, yeah, the chance of criticaling is just way too high. It is not a percentage play to hit him a second time. Much better. Okay, so now, Jesus, is there an exclamation point? I hope there is. Yeah, there is. Okay. I'm disappointed there was no smiley face in any of the... Did I miss? I missed. No, I generally name the rival smiley face when I'm actually doing attempts. So, okay, four, six. Yeah, this time is actually still really good. All right, good. So that extra experience that I got is going to give me level seven early before this Rattata on the first fight that I do. So it'll save me a turn there because I'll three hit the Rattata instead of four. It'll get me to level 10, one Bellsprout early, so I'll be able to Ember that Bellsprout, so it saves me a turn there. And I'll get Quilava straight off the Faulkner, so I'll be able to save two turns on the Rattatas in Slowpoke Well. So it'll end up saving me four turns and only cost me three. So it does overall save time and is faster. So I guess I mentioned uh, damage rolls before, so every attack in this game, oh that's bad, does not do a set amount of damage. It's variable by, oh Jesus. 
I can't remember. In this game, I think it's 18%. I'm not exactly sure. I, the number's not relevant. All I need to know is that it's there and it's really annoying. So that Pidgey could die in two hits if I'd hit one damage roll that was really high. Okay, my special attack did go to 14 at level 6. That is very good. So my special attack is really good. My speed's mediocre. Three. Jesus Christ, that was a really low roll. That'll still three hit though, so I'll be fine. And this, that like damage rolls play a huge factor throughout the whole game. All right. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Two misses, but what can you do? Tactile is a really bad move. You're probably going to be seeing a lot of misses throughout this run because the main reason that, uh, oh yeah, I guess I should have explained that as well. In the original games, uh, Gold, Silver, Crystal, the starter that's used is Totodile. Uh, the main reason for that is he gets Rage, which powers through the early game, and he can just like beat level 11s at level 7 because Rage is so good in that game. But because in this game Sprout Tower is forced, he kind of loses that early game advantage because you get to Faulkner's gym at level 12 regardless. So Cyndaquil can beat him just fine. But the mid game, throughout the remakes, you get Fire Blast and Quilava with Fire Blast does incredibly high amounts of damage. But as you can imagine, quite inaccurate and not reliable at all. But is definitely the fastest way through the game. Now, I get that question a lot, like, despite being remakes, these games are very, very different, and they play extremely different as a speedrun. Okay. Okay. And Ethan comes up again. I, this is one of the worst additions to the remake. This guy just shows up, like, eight times, and he never says anything. Ever. Okay. So yeah, like I mentioned, Sprout Tower is forced. That's where I'm going now. Uh, I don't want any encounters there. The encounter rate in Sprout Tower is actually very low, but I, I've heard stories of people getting like six encounters. I don't believe them, but <laughs> it could happen. But I haven't, uh, if I hadn't gotten any experience, I would want an encounter in here because you really do want to be uh, evolved after Faulkner. Otherwise, not only will you not you be at a lower level and not be able to one hit the Rattatars in Slowpoke World when you get there. But there are two spinners in Union Cave on the way to what's that town called? Azalea. Um, and if you hit either of those and you're still a Cyndaquil, they they bother you pretty hard. So okay, you're gonna notice I'm not even gonna get close to two hitting this Bell Sprout. That was I was doing like you know 35% damage to him. But here, despite only getting one more in attack, I'm going to be able to two-hit these Bell Sprouts. The reason for that is not only do your stats actually contribute to how much damage you do, but your level does as well. Not every level, oh that's not good, but every time your level goes to something that ends in a 3, a 5, an 8, or a 0, you get an extra boost in your power. And that does actually play a part into the routing only because of a new skip, actually, that was found, like, I don't know, a couple days before I flew over here. But you need to be level 23 before the rival's ghastly, otherwise you can't always one-hit it because of the damage range, which I didn't know, so you have to get extra experience before that. Okay. Uh, nah, I don't need to heal. I'll be fine. Random moment of bug clinch here. What if that... That second uh, bell sprout I'd used had a critical on you, and you're only at two health. I probably would have died. <laughs> oh yeah, I had two health. Yeah, I would have died. It'll be fine. I, if, if this second bell sprout crits me here, I'll die as well. <laughs> <laughs> and worse, I trust. It'll be fine, dude. I'll just critical him. It's all good. Is that how that works? Yeah. I've had like how many misses? Like three misses. I'm due for some good luck. <laughs> I don't like how you're waiting for it now. This is. Oh, no, no. <laughs> dude, no. Fuck the haters, dude. I'm, I got the faith. You say, all good, all good. I mean, if you failed one because Chad didn't spam RNG, got enough. <laughs> to be real. Okay. My bad, yeah, Kevin Turtle. I am kind of awkward on this health though. Look, I'm not going to be able to two hit the Hoot Hoot. Um, 
Oh, I guess another thing I should mention is uh, Cyndaquil's ability, which is Blaze. Uh, uh, whenever you're at one third of your health or lower, you get a 1.5 times boost in all your fire moves, which in pretty much every difficult fight, I have to be in Blaze, otherwise I will not kill anything later on in the run. Um, but I'm thinking about the Hoot Hoot right now. I'm probably not going to two hit the Hoot Hoot in Blaze, but he's going to two hit me. But if I heal, then I'm going to take more than three hits, and I don't really want to do that. So I'm kind of thinking just, you know, go in there with Blaze and Critical, or burn him or something. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I I'm thinking the crit. <laughs> Oh, so generally you do walk in front of, uh, no, in front of, you walk to the side of trainers to avoid the exclamation point that they put up, but on, oh, see, I wasn't meant to do it there, but I was going to say on that first trainer there, I deliberately walked in front of him. It's slower, but it means I don't have to go out of my way. I think it's six tiles. That increases my chance of getting another encounter. And like I said, I do not want an encounter in here. So I just walk straight in front of him. Cop the one second to not lose 12. Okay, my defense is really good, so Peck will only do four damage. So I can take one hit. If I get the crit, it'll look really good. <laughs> uh, you mean when you get the crit? Yeah. All right. All right. That's good. I'm feeling that. Now. Call all right. Old, man. So if I had killed a level four Raditar in here instead of like a level two PG or whatever, I would actually get level 12 before the Hoot Hoot as well. And I'd be a lot more confident with what's about to happen. But you know, I'm not level 12. I mean, I can heal during the fight, so it's not that risky, but I really shouldn't be doing this in a marathon, but I am anyway. Yeah, this Hoot Hoot, it, its AI is actually really janky. It has Peck, Hypnosis, and Growl. You very rarely see Growl for a very good reason, but he can still use it. Dang, I have to heal. That sucks. He's guaranteed to use Peck now because Peck will kill me. Pretty much every trainer in the game has that clause. If they have a move that'll kill you, they will use it. Uh, you might see later on, there we go. Dude, I should've just gone for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sweet. That did still save me a turn, so that was still good. But yeah, uh, coming up after this fight is Forkner, and he has quite possibly the worst AI in any Pokemon game I've ever seen. Like, the AI in red, blue, yellow in some of the fights, they're just completely random. They choose any move. Like, they have no AI at all. But this guy somehow is worse. <laughs> he has... Tackle, Gust, and Roost, which he can use. He uses Tackle and Gust fine. He reads your stats and chooses the one that does more damage. Go figure, he's a cheat. But Roost, if you don't know, heals half your health. And he can use Roost from what is essentially full health. And just sit there stalling you, using Roost forever and ever and ever. This guy is my arch nemesis. You have no idea. It's the worst thing in any video game I've ever played. But I'm definitely going to save before this fight. The other thing that's really awkward about this fight is his Pidgeotto has 24 speed. Uh, my speed at the moment is 22, but I am going to get a level up before him. I might have 24 as well, which will make this fight really, really bad. A speed tie is very awkward. But yeah, this is another 18 second save. Uh, Pidgey has Tackle and Sand Attack. If I get Sand Attack, I'm just going to switch out to Sentret and let it die because I don't want to take any chances on Pidgeotto. My health is actually really nice. My health is quite high, so I'll probably be able to take... He's going to be using Gust as well, which is good, because I'm minus special defense. It'll probably do 10 damage, which is really good. Uh, because it'll allow me to take three hits, but I'll be in Blaze for both of the last two. We'll see what happens, though. Okay. 
Oh, I got the burn. Okay, that can be good, it can be bad. That is not good because it's a speed tie, but he's guaranteed to attack because he will kill me. Hopefully he gets locked into attacking, we'll see. That did 10, so he'll take an extra burn damage. If he attacks me this turn, he's dead. That won't kill. Okay, good, he's dead. It's a speed tie, but I have quick attack, so I'm sure I can go first. That was actually a pretty good fight overall. I'm not displeased with that at all. Now, I noticed you looked a little displeased when you got Pidgeotto burned. The reason I was displeased with the burn, despite the fact that it's doing damage, is because, like I mentioned with Roost, he is a complete dipshit. He will Roost to full health and then take burn damage. So he's essentially at full health and then just Roost again to get rid of the burn damage. He can never not have burn damage after being burned, but he will still Roost it away. It's utterly ridiculous. So okay, yeah, I've got Qualava. This run's actually going really well. But yeah, you've seen for the most part, this run has been as you would expect a Pokemon game to play. You know, basic going through the battles, etc. Uh, that will change soon. Not too much. But throughout the next, you know, 30 minutes, there will be a few uh, glitches here and there. So the only glitch, actually, that I use in this run is called Tweaking. Uh, basically, this game on the map, it's made up of, well, it's actually 16 by 16, but what's important is the 32 by 32 squares that, um, like, make up the game. And it can load, uh, I think it's nine of them at a time, basically. But the intersection of where those squares meet are um, what we call the load lines. And basically, if you keep going over the intersection of those load lines uh, in a very specific manner, you can do very bad things to the game. Uh, I can't do too much until I get the bike, because the bike goes much faster. So as you can imagine, it's trying to load all of the, you know, the map a lot faster, so it does a lot more damage to the game, but the running shoes can deload sprites. Uh, the way I tend to explain it is I think of the corners as numbers. And so the running, uh, running tweak pattern that you use to deload sprites is you go from one corner to another, to another, to another, and then back to the first one. That's the way I do it is one, oh Jesus, I gotta be pressing buttons. One, two, three, four, three. So you go around in a circle, but instead of taking the last one, you just go back up to where you came from. I don't know if it makes sense. It makes sense to me. I've got maps on my notes. It's really fucking good. I can't show you though, unfortunately. All right, so this is another guy that I've got to talk to. Oh, uh, I missed it again. So there's NPCs that bring up the exclamation point as well. He is one of them. I was meant to talk to him instead of running in front of him, but I messed it up. But okay, uh, this is where I'm catching an Ekans, which is purely for Intimidate. Like I said, I'm not getting any encounters. This is terrible. Okay. Do you need the Ekans name? Yeah. So this is where Soul Silver, dif Soul Silver differs from Heart Gold. All right. That's not an Ekans. So it's a 30% chance for Ekans to show up and a 50-50 chance for it to have Intimidate. If it doesn't have Intimidate, it's worthless to me. Is the Ekans name uh, Rumola? Rumola. Is that, is that winning right now, Phil? He's saying DZX is winning. Oh. Okay, so I've got to hunt here for a little bit. That's not an Ekans. It is. Oh wow, that upset. Okay. No, I know Dizzy, he's a cool guy. That's not an Ekans. But yeah, like I said, this, this run is incredibly difficult. There's a lot of points in the game where it, it's just, you know, you've got a 15% chance for this Ekans to show up. Later on, there's like a, there's several fights where you're less than 50-50 to win. Later on, I have to catch Mewtwo, and there's like a 4% chance of every ball that I throw at him that I'll catch him. It, this run is insanely ridiculous. 4%? 4%. And that's like if he's at one health, and I'm throwing the best possible ball, you know? 4%. It's pretty good. Oh, this is not good at all, though. Am I playing Soul Silver? I'm sure there's Ekans on this game. Wow, 
Yeah, this is incredibly bad. It's the most common Pokemon on this route, I'm pretty sure. There we go. All right. So luckily I don't have to catch it to see if it has Intimidate. If it does, it'll do that. Lovely, thank you. All right, so use Quick Attack to weaken. All right, very happy that did not poison. That would have been very bad. This is like, you know, 90% to get in the wall, so I'm pretty confident this will work. Okay. That's good. That, that honestly could have been a lot worse. It was like, I wasn't counting, like seven or eight encounters, and it's like 15%, so that's honestly average, which is pretty sad, honestly, this run, Jesus Christ. Okay, got to make sure not to go in. If I go one more tile over there, that guy automatically spots you. Uh, this is where spinners actually come into the run. If you are using running shoes and you go past a spinner, they automatically detect you. So you have to make sure to switch to walking every time you pass them. They can still get you, but uh, spinners in this game are nowhere near as crazy as other games. So stop there. All right, that's good. That's one. Uh, in this game, I think the fastest they can spin is once every... Nice, all right. Every four frames? Is it every four? Yeah, in uh, Gold, Silver, Crystal, they can spin once every one frame. So in the time it takes for you to walk a tile in that game... Oh, and it runs at 60 FPS and this game runs at 30. So that's a very big difference. Yeah, it's a big difference. Yeah, in the time it takes for you to walk one tile in that game, they can spin in two full circles. In this game, it's one for one, so you're on an even playing field. So, okay, uh, I'm actually going to go to the PC here, and I'm going to get rid of both Centric and Ekans, because there's actually a double battle in Bugsy's gym, and if I only have one Pokemon, I do not have to do that battle. So, it's a nice little skip. I'm also going to heal Quilava at the same time. Really? That's interesting. No, I made that up. It's <laughs> a lie. But, okay. So now I'm going to perform the first tweak right here. So obviously you need to know where the load lines are, but hopefully I have them memorized. I'm just going to do this one right here. All right, I got that right. So OK, you see that guy with the shadow? He's gone. But I'm going to get rid of this guy right here, the grunt. Unfortunately, he's still there. But if I deload and reload the area, he's gone. And my z-axis refuses to change. So it kind of looks like I'm walking on the walls, but not really. I'm following the track there. It's just not putting me down at all. So that just saves a cutscene with Kurt, where he tells you to go to the Slowpoke Well. And luckily, when you leave the Slowpoke Well, it teleports you back to Kurt's house. So you wouldn't be able, if it, you were just left in the well, you would not be able to leave. Like, I'm trapped right now. I have to complete the well or it's over. So, okay, because I've got very good special attack, these fights are actually gonna be a bit faster. These Rattatars are both damage ranges based on your special attack. Unlucky that I got the quick attack there. But these two should be dying. Oh, that's unlucky. Nice. Thanks, damage roll. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy my special attack was good. Like, if I had bad special attack and bad speed, I would not be happy, even though this run has gone really well so far. Well, the critical issues, of course. But mainly just because of the later fights, I have to use a lot of extra X items, and some of the setups on some of the fights are quite ridiculous. It'll be, I think one of the fights, it's like blue, I mean it varies, but it can be like 16 turns of setup. And if he crits you once, you know, it's over because the critical negates all uh, stat decreases, and like pretty much everything you set up on can kill you in one hit. Alright, no supersonic there, that's good. I'm worried about poison. Poison would be really bad. Ekans has poison sting. Coughing has poison gas and smog. I don't have anything to heal poison at this stage. So if I do get poisoned, what I'm going to have to do is just run around like a dumbass and wait for Quilava to go to one health. And then the poison just fades away. Because for whatever reason, they decided after Gen 1 and 2 that uh, if you know your Pokemon can faint in the overworld, you know that can be pretty broken. If you've seen more through walls through Gen 1, it's quite easy through that technique. So they just decided the Pokemon can't paint anymore through poison. So okay, pick up the super potion. I have been decide tossing up whether there's a second super potion here, whether to get it or not. I've decided to not get it simply because I don't get it. I have no basis. I probably should be getting it because all healing items are very important throughout this whole run. And the money management is very tight as well because you skip 
a hell of a lot of battles. Okay, both these Zubats are damage ranges. Hopefully I get them, I got some good special attack. Like, the first Zubat cannot die in one hit, again. Okay, that missed, dude. I'm gonna use Quick Attack there just to save him with PP, just in case uh, Scyther messes with me a lot. Oh dear. How far, how far out of the way is the name Raider? It's in Goldenrod, it's not too bad. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, the ZX. Yeah, okay. Alright, no, I, my memory's on. No, I forgot it, to. It, it's terrible. But no, I'll do that when I get to Goldenrod. I think I know where the name Raider is, I hope so. He's in the tent. Yeah, in the tent. Yeah, I know, I know where it is. I'm good. Okay, so Coughing's gonna get one attack. Pretty much all of his attacks are hella annoying. Like, smoke screen obviously can mess with you, but... Oh no, dude! See, this is terrible. Alright, I didn't get the poison, that's lucky. Alright. That's not too bad, not too bad. I can deal with it. I wanna be above 30 health by the time I get to Bugsy. I'm gonna get one more level up, but Beedrill is gonna get one hit on me, and it's gonna be Fury Attack. And it'll do... Oh, my defense is good, so it'll probably do between 4 and 10. So if I get any more than four, actually, I'm probably gonna have to heal before Bugsy, which is not good. I wanna be just above 30 because he's gonna do 15 with quick attack. Well, 14 to 15, because my defense is really good. Uh, and I wanna be able to take two hits and only two hits because I wanna be in blaze for the second hit. Hopefully get the two hit uh, without activating the Citrus Berry. His AI is also hella ridiculous. He has Leer, Focus, Energy, and Quick Attack. He has no pattern to when he uses them. It's it's stupid. Like your your health factors it, but in no discernible pattern at all. Okay, there, there's really not too much to talk about in this gym. Like I said, there's going to be a double battle after this that I'm going to walk into, but I'm not going to battle them because I only have one usable Pokemon. And Bugsy, even though I have the type advantage in this gym, is a lot more difficult than you would expect because he is very unpredictable. And, like, he uses Focus Energy, which increases his crit rate. And he has a Citrus Berry. He takes three hits to go down, and he's going to be able to take me out in three, but... Hopefully if I get lucky with the damage ranges and blaze, I'll be able to get him in too. I'm gonna save before him regardless, but I should be good. This is the hit I was talking about earlier. Oh, no, it's over, I have to heal. Okay, for this second hit though, I'm gonna use quick attack instead of ember. <clears throat> Simply to save text, if I'd used Ember, it would have said it's super effective and I would have wasted like 1.2 seconds or something. So by using Quick Attack, I just minimized the text on the screen. Those frames. No, that, I'm happy with 40 at this stage. It could certainly be a lot worse. But uh, like I said, the hard part of this run is later on. So nothing to write home about yet. So you're gonna heal during battle? That... Uh, potentially, it depends what happens. Okay. <clears throat> like he can go focus energy, leer, leer, and just not hit me at all. You know, I could get a crit burn, you know. A burn on this fight is very good. Oh, dude, I didn't heal. Oh, yeah, I was meant to heal. Oh, well. I'll just, I'll just get the crit burn, dude. Uh, yeah, easy. Oh, see, there's the crit. Yeah. Probably should have healed. I'll do it before the next one. No, I should have asked sooner. Nah, obviously unlucky with the crit there, but uh, what can you do? 
At least it was early on in the fight. Like, if he had not crit there, it would have been perfectly fine. And I potentially would have gotten the two-hit kill, which is exactly what I'm going for. So yeah, another thing you might not know, like the burn uh, cuts the attack stat in half, which is why it's really good against Scyther, because it only has physical moves. Giving a quick attack off the bat. Wow, 12? Damn, my defense is good. That is nice. <laughs> No, I, get, I have to super. There's no way he's going to do 12. See, I was thinking the potion takes me to 25. Two quick attacks would have, you know, if he was doing 12. Let's see, that's 13. I just used Leer. Nice. That was not the attack I was trying to use. Anyway. That's going to put me into blaze. Yep. So now I'll definitely kill. Nah, no, see, that Leer was on purpose. If I'd used Ember outside of blaze, he would have lived on one health, and then he would have used a super potion. It would have wasted so much time. Good stuff. Okay, these two are completely free. They do nothing and just die in one turn. So, okay. One death up to Bugsy. That's a bad average. That was nice and quick. Okay. So, after this, I'm going to go back to the PC. I've got to take Centred and Ekans back out, because now I need them. And I'm going to put the egg back in because I don't want the egg to hatch. Also going to heal Quilava during the process and switch at the lead. Uh, the next fight I'm not going to save for, even though it does have a fairly decent chance of taking me out. Because his AI is... You pretty much bank on him being a complete dumbass and reducing your speed while you're using a move with increased priority, being quick attack. Which he does pretty much all of the time. Uh, but occasionally he just decides to be an asshole and not do that. <laughs> but the reason I'm not going to save is because it's right outside the PC. Uh, the Pokemon Center, right here. So if I die, it's actually quicker than reloading the save. And I'll get the extra experience off Ghastly, which... Uh, does a lot more than you might think, just like an extra 200 experience. Good. So the main threat in this fight is actually Ghastly. Ghastly can use Mean Look, Lick, or Curse. I think that's all its moves. Wait, does it have Lick? Yeah, it does, actually. Jeez, I never see Lick. Lick could paralyze me, and that would be just disastrous. But uh, the main move I'm worried about is Curse, because he does use that a fair bit. And I have to kind of flip my strategy if he uses Curse. Ideally, I come out of this fight in Blaze as well, because for Whitney's gym, I want to be able to kill things really quickly, and... That gym goes a lot smoother with Blaze. Okay, I got Mean Look. That's actually really good. That's exactly what I wanted. Ooh, actually, this fight could still be really bad because my attack was only 10, so my attack is low and my special defense is low. So Croconaw is going to be doing more than he usually does with Watergon, and I'm going to be doing less than I usually do with Quick Attack and Tackle. So yeah, he just spams Scary Face. He usually does all three. So I'm going to use two Leers. I want to be able to kill him with Quick Attack, Quick Attack, Tackle, Quick Attack. All right, there's all three. No, okay, I got the critical. That'll do, I guess. That's gonna be in Torrance, that'll do 30. So I can take him out now, but I'm not in Blaze, and that was a useless critical. I'm not in Blaze, and I've also still got the speed drop. Uh, my strategy for that generally is on the turn before I would get him with Quick Attack, I switch out to center it, reset the speed. Oh, that's not good. Uh, quick attack's not gonna kill. I have to Ember again. And he can flinch, and I can hurt myself in confusion. Ah, oh, that was super lucky. Yeah, that was a clutch. That's exactly one third, but I'm gonna go out of Blaze on the level up. But that's okay. The main reason I want Blaze is for Whitney's Mill Tank. Because it has Attract, and Attract is complete oh, garbage. Awful. Yeah. So hopefully, I set up on that fight, I use an X Speed, so hopefully Clefairy will put me into Blaze. 
If you're in Blaze, you can actually one-hit with these Mil Tank with Quilava. It's ridiculous how powerful Quilava is. But yeah, this is uh, one of the few times I can't talk about absolutely nothing during this run, so this wouldn't be a bad time for donations. Have $50 donation from Puddle of Sick. <clears throat> As a registered nurse, I care for patients with cancer often. I see the pain it causes, not only for the patients, but also the family they surround themselves with. I'm enjoying the stream on my day off and I had to donate. This kind of charity event is something I can get behind. Thanks. Have a $20 donation from Furret Turret. AGDQ used donate. It's super effective. Cancer fainted. Have a $20 donation from Chrissy Boy. Hey Worcester, good luck with the run. Make Australia proud. Put this towards killing the animals. We have a hundred dollar donation from Twill. Early detection just recently saved my mom's life from breast cancer. Awesome cause and awesome games. Have a two hundred dollar donation from Ryujin. Hey guys, great AGDQ 2014 so far. Here's 200 towards the battle against cancer and the Jota region. Good luck beating Lance and all the Dragonites. You have a $50 donation from Herbster. I have watched so many AGDQs and SGDQs that I feel like I know you all. This is an amazing event and I hope that you guys do more. Thanks for the endless hours of entertainment. Okay, so I'm actually backtracking here to get the charcoal. Uh, it, it isn't useful in the old Pokemon games to get items like this, but in Gen 4, they increased the boost from 10% to 20%. So with the charcoal equipped, all my fire moves go up by 20%, which is a very significant boost and helps for just about every battle from this point onwards. So I'm going to equip that while I use this repel and teach cut to sentry. Okay. This, uh, this repel step is one of the most awkward. There's actually 201 steps you need to get out of all of the grass if you do the movement perfectly, all the way to the end uh, just before the daycare because I'm going to be picking up both ethers and the super potion in here because better to be safe than sorry. And it, it's ridiculous, so there's one patch of grass that I'm not going to be using a repel in. How often I get an encounter in that one patch of grass. <laughs> so okay, this is another really cute thing. So they changed the kimono girls in this game to kind of encounter you throughout the game. But uh, she asks you out of the forest. It's actually quicker to say no. They, no, you're not going to show her out of the forest. Your Pokemon does it anyway, just proving that, you know, the humans don't actually do anything in this game. But, yeah, it just saves a line of text to say no to her. Hidden items in this game are actually super responsive compared to others. If you hit the, uh, hit the A button making that sound so fancy. You hit the button on the tile that you get there, it registers no matter what. In other games, you actually have to slow down in order for it to register. Okay, I got three. Thank you. <laughs> this is another completely pointless cutscene. This is probably where I should start talking about um, tweaking, because I'm just about to get the bike. I'll go shopping, get Fire Blast, which is why Palava's so <coughs> overpowered. Uh, get a few X items for later, and then get the bike, so. Yes, rename Ekans before I do any tweaking. All right, I, I, I'll remember, I'm sure. But um, like I said, the game, I think it loads nine of the 32 by 32 squares. And so what I'm gonna be doing for both, I'm actually doing a double tweak here. This is just to get into the gym a bit quicker uh, without getting the radio card. Uh, this pattern is one, two, three, two, one. So I'm gonna be approaching from the bottom on the right and then going to the left and then up and then down and then back to where I came from. And basically what that's going to do is, uh, like, I don't know why, but it's taking what's above the tiles that you're currently on and it loads them below. Like I could 
throw out some theories about why that works, but it works, and it's a consistent pattern that works just about everywhere. And I say just about everywhere because it's not actually consistent at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load what's above me to below me just to access <coughs> more load lines and then access what's below me to above me and then reload the map and then just kind of walk into the gym. It, it's much uh, easier to explain with visual, but it's going to be happening too fast for me to explain it there. I'm sure you'll understand when I get there. So okay, it's quicker to take the escalator up than the elevator. Just because the elevator is so slow. Okay, I haven't lost any battle, so my money should be exactly as I'm expecting. Like I said, money in this run is actually quite tight simply because you skip a lot of battles and you need to heal a lot because you're very underleveled later on. What do I need? Two, one, one. Okay, and I'll pick up two awakenings. Yeah, this should be fun. All right, I'll get the bike, rename Ekans. My movement is horrible right now. Fortunately for me, Pokemon's such a casual game that movement really doesn't mean anything. Like the, the randomness of the game just changes the time so much, it's ridiculous. Like I said, the bike in this game is actually quite fast. Um, two frames per tile is very difficult to handle comparatively to other bikes in earlier games. Oh yeah, another thing I should mention, uh, I actually use the circle pad for tweaking. I use the D-pad for just about everything else, but I use a combination of both for tweaking. For whatever reason, ooh, hit, okay. Uh, because it has two inputs, I use both of them just to switch between them. It's much easier, but it's like, oh, what was it? I forget now. Up and down, both take priority over left and right. And left and right, oh, I was not meant to enter that house. Left and right, both take priority over up and down, but up takes priority over down. Down does not take priority over up. And, yeah, this is the name reader, I think. Yeah, all right. Left takes priority over right but right does not take priority over left. I don't understand it, like, it it doesn't make sense. Okay, what am I naming it? GZA. My explanation probably didn't make any sense either. But that's fine. So, okay, here's the tweet coming up now. Okay, fine. Here we go. So obviously this isn't meant to be here. Oh, I'm messing this one up bad. There we go. Reload the map, and straight into the gym. So like I said, I loaded what was above me to below to access the load lines to then put what was below me to above, and then where it thought I was, was right at the gym, so I could just walk straight into it, but it was accessing what was below the route below Goldenrod, so I could just walk in there, because the, or the solidity of the tiles are what it shows, but if you just reload the map, it knows exactly where you actually are. Now, how much time is that glitch save, though? Like, 12 seconds. And because I messed it up, probably like two. <laughs> as long as it's profit. Yeah, definitely profit. Like at this stage, pretty much all the tweaks are very, very minimal. Actually, that's the last one until the big ones. But yeah, so I'm gonna do the first five badges. And you know, like I said, you know, you see that, that tweak right there and you go, okay, well that's obviously not normal, but you know, you're straight back into regular play. So I think this run has a bit of everything for everyone. 
who wants to watch a Pokemon speedrun, whether you're, you know, just a casual wants to watch the battles and watch crits go on, or you actually want to see the game get broken. All right. So if I was in Blaze there, I would have been able to kill that Snubble with uh, Ember, but I had to go to Fire Blast. It hit, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so my Blaze range is 19, so I need to take four damage from Clefairy. So if I get Double Slap, I'll pretty much any metronome that does damage, I'll be in Blaze for Mill Tank. How's that time looking so far? World record pace, actually. Really? Exactly on world record pace right now. Too easy. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going in X speed on this fight. Only Miltank is faster than me, and generally you shouldn't be using an X item when only one Pokemon is faster than you, but like I said, it has a track. It also has Stomp, which can flinch you, which is not good. And I want to get manipulated in a blaze. Double Slap is perfect. But this is a bit too many times, though. It doesn't really matter. If I hit both these Fire Blasts, they'll both die in one hit. I won't be able to survive a Stomp, though. So if I miss this Fire Blast, it's a death. It's 85% accuracy, so it's not that bad, but it is bad enough to worry about it. You know, I got the hit. So that's Whitney down. Now, I see that your Fire Blast PP is really like low, you only have five. Yeah. Is there ever a part in the run where you're gonna have to like really be conservative about PP usage? Uh, there actually is. I always have to keep it in mind. There is never one set, you know, route for the PP because you can miss Fire Blast. And because Blaze also plays a factor, like coming up on this next fight, there's going to be a double battle. And because I am in Blaze, I can use Flame Wheel and be able to kill them. If I wasn't in Blaze, I'd have to use Fire Blast so my PP would be lower. And this continues on and on and on throughout the whole run. I am getting three ethers uh, to compensate the Fire Blast PP. I will definitely have to use at least two of them. But yes, it is very important, the PP of Fire Blast, especially throughout the mid part of the run, when it's pretty much all I'm using. Because my options at the moment are Fire Blast, Flame Wheel, and Ember. And Flame Wheel and Ember are pretty much the same power, because Palaver is a special attacker. So Fire Blast is about three times as powerful as both of them. Okay. Okay. Pick up the Squirt Bottle. I'm going to do... Oh, gee, I forgot about this tweak. No, there's another one coming up right here. Uh, I'm going to get the free Spiro, which is actually useful for this double battle because it comes at level 20, which is almost as high as Quilava is. Unfortunately, it doesn't get the moves. I tried to route using this Kenya throughout the run. It almost worked, but it didn't really at all. It was kind of close, but uh, this tweak that I'm doing here is exactly the same as the one you saw before visually, but it's actually going to do something very different. Okay, that's good. So the reason this one works is it's actually changing my Z-axis, so I'm now running under the trainers, simply because what I loaded there, you know, had a down incline, so I could just kind of go straight under them. So that actually only skipped one trainer, but it also skipped two spinners, so I don't have to worry about hitting them. And one of them has like a magma, no he has two magmas actually, which aren't the easiest things in the world to kill. I'm actually not liking my health right now, 13 out of 61 is not great, because if I'm, you know, 10 or less, I would actually use an orange berry to give myself an extra 10 health. Because I want to be in Blaze for this fight, but I don't want to be too low, so I have the potential to actually die. And right now, if I use an Orange Berry, I'm not going to be in Blaze, but I have the potential to die in one hit. Pseudowood, I'm just going to run from. I'm, I'm just going to risk it, dude. I'll be fine. <laughs> Before I forget, I should switch Kenya to slot two as well, because the double battle is coming up right now. <coughs> I should do that right here. I'm kind of thinking about it. It's one of the things I really like about running Pokemon. They're, like, you can have a route and you can run the game 
as many times as you like, but you're still going to make on-the-spot decisions that are almost completely up to the player. Like, you can actually have different styles of how people play in this game. Oh, I totally messed up that movement. So, okay, this is the double battle I was talking about. They both have a Wigglytuff and a Clefable. I actually think my attack is bad. I might not be able to kill with a Flame Wheel and an Aerial Ace. I should be able to kill the Wigglytuff because they're a bit easy to take out, but maybe not. I might have to Fire Blast the Clefables. We'll see what happens though. I should be good. Yeah, okay, that one will go down. So I'm hoping... Okay, Encore. Well, I'm forced to use Flame Wheel now. And I also don't get to choose which one I attack, which is not good. I hope I hit the left one. Good. Please go down. That's going to be close. Dude, are you serious? Wow. That is on no health. If that hits me four times, I'm out. All right, I'm good. I don't get to choose anything right now. Please hit the left one. Okay, good. If he hits Quilava, Quilava's gonna go down. But nice, okay. Sweet. All right. I lost a turn there, but I was lucky enough to not die, so I'll take it. Encore is actually also making my menuing a lot easier because I don't have to reselect the moves. So that's cute, I guess. This one will go down. All right, nice, I'll take that. And Kenya just barely doesn't get to level 21, which is really nice because it would try to evolve into Firo and that would waste a bunch of time. Uh, what do I want to do here? Repel, Super Potion, and Ether Fire Blast. Yeah, because I only have two Fire Blasts. I need to have three for the next fight. So this is what I was talking about here. Because I'm level 22 right now, I'm actually going to go duck into here and fight the coughing. Uh, in the old route, when we didn't actually know about that tweak, the most recent one that I did to skip one trainer, you would be level 23 here, and you would always be able to one-hit the rival's ghastly, but I'm only level 22, and because of the damage boost you get from getting a level between 2 and 3, it's actually a percentage play to go out of your way to fight this guy, just to make sure you can always one-hit that ghastly. I worried that wasn't going to take me to level 23. I just kind of made up that I routed that. I didn't do that at all. I was just <laughs> hoping that worked. <laughs> okay. So that gives you Surf much easier than in the originals where you had to beat all five Kimono girls. Okay, go take my arrival on. I'm also not going to save before my arrival because he has a very, very low chance of beating me in this fight because he is a complete dumbass in this fight. So I'm going to hedge my bets that I can get him. Are there any other notable trainers that have really bad AI in this game? Pretty much all of them have really bad AI in this game. <laughs> yes, not quite that bad, but... Pretty shocking. Like, all the gym leaders have terrible AI. Uh, the Elite 4 are good. And Blue is generally good, but Blue is very wonky. So, okay, on this fight, I'm actually going to use a guard spec on Croconaw because he's roughly like an 85% chance to use Scary Face. And if he uses Scary Face, I end up being slower than all of his last three Pokemon. Which, I'm not actually worried about... Why did that not die? Okay. Um... Whatever, use Mean Look. It was RNG manipulation. It's all good. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not worried about being slower than Croconaw. I'm worried about being slower than, most notably, Magnemite, because he will use Thunder Wave, and Zubat has Supersonic, and it can chain really badly. Alright, Scary Face, that's good. Two Fire Blasts is a damage range to take out this guy. My special attack is really good, so I'm hoping I'll be able to get him. All right, sweet. That was good, that one Water Gun, like, that damage is pretty negligible. I would rather he didn't hit me, but it doesn't really matter. I have to Fire Blast Zubat as well. All right, nice, I hit all three, so that's good. 
I don't think I've missed a five last year. Mm, correct. So that's nice. Six for six so far. That's good. So, okay, the reason I'm here is because you have to release the dogs, otherwise Morty refuses to fight you. He just kind of sends you out of the gym. Same reason I had to do Sprout Tower. Faulkner just won't fight you if you don't do it. Uh, it's actually really annoying in this game because the way repels work in this game, oh, well, in all Pokemon games, is it only repels Pokemon that are a lower level than you. And both the legendary dogs, well, not Suicune, because you can't encounter Suicune in the wild, are level 40. So throughout this run, it is actually more than likely that I'm going to run into one of them by accident, even though I'm using a repel. In the original games, in Gold Silver, you don't have to come here. And in Crystal, you cannot encounter them in the Wydal until you encounter Suicune later on. So you don't have to worry about that, but in this game, they're, they're assholes. What's even more annoying is that the fastest route throughout this game would actually be to use Raikou. You would just chuck a ball at him and go roll the 1.6% chance of catching him with a fastball and use him throughout the whole run. The issue is you have to plan for it. I wouldn't have bought Fire Blast, I would have bought Thunder instead. So if he appears, I can't just catch him and switch to that route. So now off to the gym. Do you feel that people ever get that crazy and go for that route at some point? I will probably get that crazy and go for that <laughs> route at some point. I, I've already routed it. I know exactly what to do. I looked into a lot of uh, RNG manipulation to try and get the Master Ball from the lottery, but it's just not feasible at all. I spent like weeks looking into it. It just didn't work. It was really disappointing. 1.6%. Yeah. I like those odds. <laughs> it's like an hour into the run as well. Yeah, it's pretty oh, good. Yeah. I mean, and you only get one shot at it as well, because you only get one fastball. If you throw a Pokeball, it's like 0.3% chance. So. What's the chance for getting Encountering him is 10%. Chucking the ball is like 40%. It's not that bad at all. And you get like however many encounters. Okay, so in this gym, uh, you only fight Ghastly's Haunters and Gengars. So I'm probably gonna see like plus three special attack on this level up. No, it was only plus two, dang. But you get like so many special attack EVs in here because everything is giving you special attack EVs. Which, I mean, it doesn't actually play any part into the routing, it's just cute because you're only fighting things that you have to. Actually, that's not true in this run. You do fight two extra trainers for experience because otherwise this run would be pretty much impossible. So this is one of those fights where I would really like higher attack than I have. I'm probably not gonna be able to kill either of these Haunters with Flame Wheel, so I'm actually gonna throw down Fire Blast because I'm confident I'm not gonna be able to kill with Flame Wheel. Nice. <coughs> And if I miss, he'll probably use Nightshade and then put me in the blaze and then I will be able to kill. No, he used Curse, whatever. Well, I can kill now because that takes health off his health. Now he's out. Okay, so I have no Fire Blast, so I do have to Aether. Uh, what should I do here? All right, no, I'm not gonna Aether. What's gonna happen is this Haunter, this level 22 Haunter, is going to use Sucker Punch, which is a priority move, assuming you're attacking. I'm actually not in Blaze right now, I'm one off Blaze. I, 23 is Blaze, I'm on 24. But he's going to use Sucker Punch, knock me into Blaze, and then I'm going to one-hit with Flame Wheel. Sounds good. Easy peasy. I would have lived, I would have lived. It did nine. I was actually worried about that, but no, nah, all good, all good. <laughs> okay, this movement is actually pretty tricky. I guarantee you I'll mess it up. Oh dear, I like I wasn't even looking. Okay, that's better. That was what I was meant to do. So that wasted like <coughs> nine seconds or something. Okay, still in blaze, so I'll be able to one hit this haunter as well with flame wheel. Uh, my health is actually really low, which is not good. I don't have a super potion remaining. Do I have a regular potion? I hope I do. If I don't, I am pretty screwed, actually. Because my special defense is really low. 
which means Gengar's Shadow Ball is going to be doing around 52 damage. So I need to be above 52 health. And I have three Orange Berries, which will take me to like 47. I'll get an extra level, it'll be like 49. So if I don't have that potion, I might be screwed here. We'll see what happens. No, I think I saw one. I think I saw one. I'll be good. And I'll use the ether at the same time, which is why I didn't use it earlier. Just to save... What the heck was that? I'm in you. Yeah, see, I got one. Alright, I'm good. So I'm going to heal to 57. So I want to kind of lure him into using Shadow Ball, so then I'll be in Blaze and I can one-hit him. So I'm going to save before this fight as well. Morty is another guy with terrible AI. Just, they're all bad. It's terrible. So he has Shadow Ball, Curse, no, 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 Shadow Ball, Hypnosis, Sucker Punch, and Mean Look, and he can use all four. And unless he can kill you with Shadow Ball, it's just completely random which one he uses. See Sucker Punch less often, but there's no real method to his madness. I'm also, this is another fight where I'm going to use an X speed, even though it's only going to make me faster than one Pokemon, because it'll save me from him using Hypnosis, because if he then uses Hypnosis, yeah. because I'm faster, I can use the Awakening, wake up, he uses Shadow Ball, I'm in Blaze, and I one-hit him. That's the plan, anyway. All right, Shadow Ball, that'll put me into Blaze. 54, it did. Oh, I didn't use the Ether. Okay, well, this is over. Critical? Nah, it's over, nah, it's over. He's using Shadow Ball guaranteed there. Dang, dude, that's unfortunate. A critical would have killed, that would have been sweet. Not too worried about the health. So, so far, right, two deaths? Yes, two deaths. Don't worry, guys, board record has six. I've yeah, still so got we, this. Yeah, we can still get more I still got this. Yeah, 255.48. That's my PB. And what record is? 255.48. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I made world record. Huh? Use real-time Yeah, you use real-time because there's actually one... Uh, tweak later on in Viridian City where you have to save and reset. Well, you don't have to, but it's much safer and much easier to save and reset. And so because a reset is required, game time is invalid. So we use real time for this category. Okay, I did ether, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay. Same. Okay, good. The level 23... Me. <laughs> Every time. The level 23 Haunter actually has Sucker Punch, but he very rarely uses it. If he does, it'll kill me, but I'm just going to kind of bank on him not using it because I don't want to heal, so that's what's going to happen. All right, sweet. No, no, what? Ah, uh, okay. Can we get this? I can probably get this with Kenya. He's gonna heal, obviously. Dude, he has hypers. Oh my goodness. All right, that'll kill in three. Mean look. What is he doing? Sucker Punch. Alright, I should tank that. Dude, I got this. Thank you, Kenya. 931. Uh, that is really bad. So he's got boosted experience, so it's not actually 931. But that is... Ooh, what am I going to do for experience? Okay, no, okay. Alright, I have a plan. This is not good. I... No. Okay. I did not know that Haunter could live a flame wheel in Blaze. I was kind of thinking about it because my attack is bad. I just didn't think it was going to be that bad. 
Uh, ooh, I need to heal as well. Okay, should I do that in Mahogany? Yeah, all right, that's where I'll do it. I don't want to heal in a Critique, be uh, a Critique because there's an extra cutscene where Bill comes out and talks about how he fixed the PC. So I'm going to heal at Mahogany. Uh, Kenya is level 21, so it should be able to repel all the wild encounters. I hope. <laughs> Make sure to go an extra tile up, just so the NPC walks one extra tile. So all I'm doing over here is getting items. So I'm going to get the choice specs and a rare candy over here. The choice specs are another reason why Qualava is much better than Totodile in this game. I like how I compare Qualava to Totodile. But anyway, um... Like, you cannot get the choice band without going to the Battle Frontier in this game, but you can get the choice specs. And if you don't know what they do, they increase your special attack by 50%, but they do not allow you to... I did not buy any items. Jesus Christ. I thought I was forgetting something. I was forgetting everything. Nice. Okay. That doesn't cost too much time. But obviously, a very silly mistake. Oh yeah, there was one run. I forget which one it was. I think it was like my first heart gold run. You have to equip the choice specs to Mewtwo, and I forgot to do it. And I was thinking, what is going on with this run? Like it's absolute garbage. And it turns out it was the best Mewtwo you could possibly have. It was modest and had like incredibly high special attack, but I was doing no damage and had no idea what was going wrong. But every <laughs> yes, I did still get world record in that run. <laughs> All right, I don't think there's higher than level twenty ones in here, so I should be fine. Do I do a box heal? No, I have to do a regular heal. I did not want to jump that ledge, but I messed up the movement just a little bit. That costs what? Is it six? Six frames. Because it goes into walking animation. Oh no, it goes into... Jesus, I don't know. It goes into something. It's slower. That's all you need to know. Uh, could you explain what choice specs do? Oh, didn't I do that? Increase your special attack by 50%, assuming <laughs> but you're locked into using only one move. And because later on in the run, I'm going to be using pretty much only Flamethrower. Very, very useful item. It would be impossible to do a lot of these fights without it. Okay. No, dude, the bike shop. Okay. He, he just calls you whenever you... Uh, I think it's actually time-based rather than step-based. I'm actually going to fight this guy on purpose because you need extra experience. I need to be level 29 before Chuck. Because I missed that experience off Haunter, I actually think I'm going to have to fight another extra trainer in Chuck's gym who has a Hitmonlee. I'll see what happens, though. I'll just fight the first guy. He has a Machop and a Machoke. If I don't get to 29, I'll fight the guy with the Hitmonlee. I need to be 29 before Chuck, so I can use two rare candies to be 31 before Chuck. Then I can fight an extra trainer and then an extra trainer to then be 34, so I can use another two rare candies to be Typhlosion before this one cool trainer, who, if you are not Typhlosion, completely destroys you. So, okay, go on up here to get the choice specs. Rare candy on the way down. And then go back to Cyanwood. This is another really tight repel usage right here. Oh, wow. Okay, that was not what I was trying to do. I was trying to walk into the tree to stop myself, but I went one too far. I like how I got it on the first tile as well. Okay. Of course. That's cute. But yeah, if you... Uh, this You need like 
196 tiles, I think, to get out to Mount Mortar if you use the rappel at the right stage. So if you use that rappel a bit too early, which is why I wanted to run into the tree, it runs out before you get through Mount Mortar. Ooh. This is actually a bit of downtime, so more donations here would be fine. We have a $500 donation from Anonymous. <laughs> it's easy to miss that beneath all the entertaining abrasiveness, Worcester is not, is one of, if not the most diligently prepared and passionate speedrunners in the community. Thanks for years of extremely high standards and questionable vocabulary. Could I get a request <laughs> of a round of applause for all of those who work behind the scenes and only get noticed when they mess up? We have a $100 donation from Me Gots This. Love watching AGDQ 2014 so far. Everything has been awesome. Loving all the donation comments for defeating cancer. Making this donation to Worcester's Choice after the run. Okay. Got $20 donation from Mark Kerrigan. Hi guys, best of luck to Worcester with this. Soul Silver Run, such a brilliant game and such a brilliant cause. We have a $50 donation from Cave Dog. Hey all, congrats on all the runs and it's good to see you Pokemon. I will donate a hundred dollars more if Burton at least pretends to be happy to be there. Bible thumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're brothers. We're happy and we're singing and in colored. Da -da -da -da. Give me a high five. There you go. We have, a, <laughs> <laughs> we have a $20 donation from Kinisala. Love what you guys do. I lost my aunt when I was seven years old to breast cancer, and the rest of my family is at risk for it. Let's stomp cancer out. Shout out to Worcester for playing the first Pokemon game I ever got to play. Have a $20 donation from Tristan. Wonderful stream and cause. Well done, people. Keep it going. Keep dropping the knowledge. It's very fascinating stuff from Norway. Have a $20 donation from Shadile. Cancer sucks. You guys are awesome. Okay, so I've switched to the choice specs temporarily here. I'm going to switch back to the charcoal because... I need to not be locked into moves, but uh, I need to be using Fire Blast with very high power, especially against Chuck. He's one of the most difficult fights uh, throughout this run. He's pretty much the start of the difficult fights. It's where this game turns from, you know, oh, you might die here or there to you will die everywhere. Uh, I'm going to be slower than Primate. He won't be able to one hit me actually, because my defense is really good. I didn't get level 29, so I'm gonna fight this guy right here. I'll just run into him. Uh, he's probably going to take two hits because Hitmonlee has very high special defense, but that's not too bad. Um, yeah. Uh, Polyrath is the big issue, but Primeape is, like I said, faster than me. Focus Punch will do. Oh, wow, that's so close. And I have to use Fire Blast because I'm locked into it. That would have been cute if that missed and I killed it with Struggle, but oh well. Yeah, Prime FS 65 speed. I'm not getting that. So are you out of a? Uh, are you out of PPs now for that or? Yeah, no, I've got an Ether there, so okay. it's all good. But yeah, I do want all five for Chuck because his Prime A pretty much spams double team. And it's very possible he only has two Pokemon, and you generally only have to hit him three times. But it is very possible that you run out of all five PP just on the Prime Ape, just because it sits there spamming double team the whole time. And then Polyrath has both Surf and Focus Punch and Hypnosis, all of which are very, very bad. It's okay, use both rare candies. 
My defense is good, so like I said, I will be able to tank a Primate Focus Punch, which is very nice, actually. Do I want Swift? Yes, I do. Split-second decision. You need to teach either Swift or Strength to Quilava, and it depends on what his stats are, uh, what you do. What is the other thing? I need a Aether. That's right. Uh, and because I have very low attack, I'm going Swift instead of Strength. It's purely for one Pokemon, which is a flaring on later on. It has an ability called Flash Fire, which is basically all fire type moves do absolutely nothing. Which is why I have to switch off the choice specs as well. Alright, so given that you just saved, how are we looking on World Wreck and Pace? Uh, 124 at this gym. Oh, I actually can't remember. Probably World Record Pace, I don't know. Yeah, uh, the World Record died to this guy, so if I don't die to this guy, we're on World Record Pace. I'll awesome. put it that way. Alright. Just a quick update. We have just passed Desert Bus, and we are now currently the most profitable donation marathon for charity. <laughs> Profit for the charity, obviously. Blame it on the Pokemons. Okay, that's not good. If he uses Body Slam or Surf here, it's over. I have to hope he uses Focus Punch. He didn't. Okay, I need, now I need to just hope I critical. That is not a critical. So he's going to use... He's not going to use Hypnosis. So yeah, it's over. That's a reset. Dang. Nothing I could do there. He just gave me bad attacks. For whatever reason is, AI is bad enough to use Focus Punch, even though Body Slam and Surf will kill me. And if you don't know how Focus Punch works, if you attack them when they use it, it they just lose their focus and it doesn't actually do anything. Uh, I got really unlucky getting Focus Punch turn one from, Poly, uh, from Prime Ape, though. Like, that's what I mean, though. Now, like, that fight, it looked ordinary. Like, there was nothing substantial about that fight that made me lose. But I lost because I just didn't get terrible AI from the opponent. That's the wrong thing. Leer. Okay, that's not good at all. I just will be able to live that? Okay. Do not... God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. It begins. Alright. Okay, so again, I have to hope for either Focus Punch or a Critical. In the exact same situation. Rock Slide is really rare, as is Leer. I cannot believe I got both of them. Alright, good. Focus Punch. If I can hit them both, I should be able to take them out in two. Yeah, definitely. I'll get him in two. Sweet. Alright, that's shut down. I can't tell you why that worked, but it did. So, okay, uh, now the big skip is coming up, but before that I do have to do a bit of shopping and a bit more item hunting as well. So, I, I have to get a lot of X items, especially specials. My special is good, so I think I need 32 X specials, 4 X speeds, 2 X defense, and 2 X special defense. And there's... Oh, jeez. I can't remember. How many fights are there left? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve fights left. And I had 32 X specials. So every fight from here on out is going to have some intensive X setups going on? Uh, pretty much. Like the first one doesn't, but pretty much every one after that does. Yeah. Which fight will have the most X setup to need? Like how many turns will the most ones need? Blue definitely requires the most. It requires five X specials and two X defense, and your health needs to be between 25 and 32%. Got that. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you have to attack on the turn that Trick Room wears off, which is one every five turns, and you need to not be asleep, and he uses Hypnosis half the turn. Easy. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a pretty simplistic fight. Okay. I, I didn't use the super well. Okay, do that now. Doesn't actually matter when I do this. Charcoal back. Yes, yes. Agree. Because I'm in blaze, equip the charcoal back. If I was not in blaze, I would keep the specs on. Okay, if I do this right, there should be a little music overlay here. So it's playing the jingle over the actual music. It's not meant to do that. Flight of Goldenrod. 
get the other rare candy here and get the nugget. Obviously, I need a bit more money. So I'm going to get the second nugget here. And that should set me up. Buy a few healing items. I don't actually know how much I'll be able to buy. Hopefully three, maybe. Another awkward thing about this game is whenever you run into a wall, there's like a drawback. You just cannot move for like, oh, I forget what it is. It might be 16 frames. You're just stuck there looking at the wall. It's for no reason. Okay, so I'm gonna go up to the top and buy Hyper Beam, which is a very important uh, move for this run, just because it's not a fire move. Like that's the only reason. It's to kill things that have flash fire and that's it. And then all the X items and just spend the rest on healing. Scrub, scrub question here. Mm -hmm. Does the legendary and or a free master ball come to play in the route at all, if ever? Uh, you do get a free master ball in the game, but unfortunately to do that, you actually need to uh, get the eighth badge. And obviously in this run, I'm not getting the eighth badge, so I'm not gonna get the free master ball at all. Otherwise, you would definitely pick it up to catch Mewtwo with, because catching Mewtwo without the Master Ball is actually very, very difficult. However, beating Red without Mewtwo is impossible, so I'll take very difficult over impossible any day. Yeah, I want 32. So depending on what your stats are, you either buy one, four, or six X speeds. Always get two defense and two special defense. Wait, no, it's three defense. Okay. That would have actually been disastrous if I'd only bought two. All right. Two special defense. And then either 30, 32, or 34 specials. How much money have I got? All right, I got enough for three. That's good, I'll be fine. All right, so to clarify, then you will be trying to catch a Mewtwo with a non-Master Ball. Correct. No, no, no. Let me clarify that. I will be catching Mewtwo <laughs> without a Master Ball. <laughs> All right. So, okay, now I'm going to fly back to New Bark Town, and this is where the big sequence breakings begin. And it's not anything different to what you've seen. It's just it skips a lot more of the game. I'm actually going to save before this one because it can go disastrously wrong. You see my Quilava is only 31. Throughout this tweak, I'm actually gonna be running through a little bit of grass, and there are level 32 Ponytars that can show up. They are only a 5% chance, but if they show up, obviously it completely ruins the whole tweak. But okay, so I'm gonna do a load tweak from left to right, and then I'm gonna do what's called a load tweak. So I'm gonna load a void Oh, did I say void tweak? All right, whatever, it's a void tweak. And I load the void to the right, so then I can continue running. That pattern is, all right, got that first go. That pattern is one, two, three, two, three. It's just how I explain it to myself. It probably doesn't make sense to anybody else. Okay, this is it here. All right, got that first go as well. And that skips all of the Tojo Falls. I fight this trainer on purpose for experience. And so that skips badge six, seven, and eight, getting Waterfall, Whirlpool, all that good stuff, all the Team Rocket stuff that everybody hates in this game, and straight over to the Elite Four now. Can you quantify that skippage in time saved? A lot. Like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe an hour. Also, I just realized I only have one Fire Blast. I hope this Flame Wheel kills. I'm actually not sure it will. I Just, I'll critical, that'll be it. All right, he went down, okay. All good, all good, all good. I was very worried about that. Okay, 63, so I've got Venusaur. He has 58 speed, so I've just got him. Oh wow, that's a death. That's really unfortunate, because now I have to do all the tweaking again. That, uh, it's not worth a save before that trainer, because they're so easy, but that's a really big time loss, because that sets me back big time. Yep. OK, 
Okay. <sighs> Let's try that again. I'll watch Ivysaur live this time. So I need to be in Blaze for either of these to die with Flame Wheel, otherwise I would have to Fire Blast all three, which is why I don't want to heal at all. And if I heal, like... It... Venusaur's gonna do more than a third of my health, so if I heal at all, it's pretty irrelevant, no matter... Dude, that lived. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh my goodness. Yeah, that won't do anything, because it's gonna do more than 19 health regardless, so... It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm gonna save before this trainer this time. This is ridiculous. All the places to die. Oh, I don't have any more ethers as well, so I have to kill with Flame Wheel. Alright, well that's four deaths now. Two more left in the bank. <laughs> so it's like any consequence to like loading a save from while in this like glitch state? Well, if I end up being inside a wall, then yeah, I'm stuck in the wall forever. Which would not be too great. Actually, now that I think about it, that better not be a wall. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be one tile inside a wall, so if I go up, I'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. I'll, just, I'll just get it this time. It'll be fine. <laughs> All right, easy peasy, easy peasy, all right. <laughs> oh, nice, good timing, good timing, as always. I don't have to, never to find out. Oh, I would have been trapped. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nah, no, nah, no, nah, no. it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> Ooh, wow, that train almost got me. It's okay, I'm actually gonna save before this next spinner, I'm just gonna dodge this one. But if either of these spinners hit me, it's pretty much over. So I'm just gonna save before this one. In a sigh of relief. Trust me, I'll just get water record. You just gotta believe, guys. <laughs> all right, good. Good, no ponytails at all. And this just happens to be a free heal, which is really nice. I would save before this next trainer, but I just saved earlier before. Or oh, these next two trainers are really, really deadly. <laughs> Because obviously I'm on the way to the Elite Four now and I've missed a lot of experience, so. These next few fights are very bad. They're also very bad because of the Pokemon that they have. Uh, their leads are fine, Victorelle and Parasect, but collectively after that they have a Kingla, which is obviously water type, bad. A Flareon, which cannot be damaged by fire type moves. A Golduck, which is another water type. And a Vaporeon, which is another water type. It's pretty torturous. Okay. So I've got Swift for Flareon this time. Swift probably won't even three hit the Flareon after an X special. Its special defense is ridiculous. But King will die in one hit from Fire Blast. Ah, oh, Protect, that's annoying. Fire Blast PP doesn't matter too much. This is the only one I'm... Wow, this is so rare. This is just a huge waste of time. Ah. Uh... <laughs> What? Oh. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, 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 I don't even know what to say, dude. That, oh my god. 
percentage here of that happening? Uh, zero, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Okay, my defense is good. He won't kill with another bite. Oh, sound attack, okay. All right. Heal up here, you'll use quick attack. And then I'll kill with swift. So strength wasn't gonna three hit this Valerion because my attack is complete ass. So I elected to go with Swift over Strength. I'll teach Strength to Ekans, who has a free slot for Strength, so it ends up being faster to teach it to him anyway. And Swift negates the Sand Attack that Flareon could be using. It also leaves open another free slot, because you can't teach over HM moves, so I'd have to keep Strength on for lava the whole game. But I can get rid of Swift. It doesn't actually help, but I have an idea that I'm going to test in the run. And it might, it might be good, we'll see. All right, so now I'm gonna evolve into Typhlosion. Also teach Lava Plume and Hyper Beam here. So, absolutely huge buff that I take here. Two very good moves and I get the evolution. I don't get to check my speed, do I? I just, I'll just assume I go past 72. 72 is Rapid Ash's speed. Like, I'm not 72 there, but I evolve, so I'll get extra speed. It doesn't really matter too much anyway. Okay, so teach Hyper Beam, save before this trainer, because this trainer lead is Parasect, which is really nice, but unfortunately you have to use either two or three X specials, depending on how Parasect acts. It has Swords Dance, and it has Slash, which is a high crit rate, and it has Spore, just to waste time. Uh, if it crits you with Slash, it's pretty much always going to one-hit you, so... A world record died to this next fight twice. This is where I'm gonna pass. Probably like a minute behind at this stage. Which really doesn't mean that much at all. Like the Elite Four is where all the time goes. And Blue, and Mewtwo, and pretty much everywhere <laughs> after this point, honestly. <laughs> There's what, there's two, three, yeah, there's 10 battles left in the whole run from this point. And there's like, I don't know what my time is looking like now, but probably an hour left for World Record to do 10 battles. It's, it's pretty ridiculous. Just how underleveled you are, simply because all the glitches in this game are just map related. Nothing to do with the battles. Okay, Spore, that's annoying. So if I get put into Blaze after 2x specials, I can go and take out all three, but I'm not going to be in Blaze. I'm going to use the Awakening now, though. Ooh, I only have two Awakenings. I'm going to have four. I must have done something wrong. Okay, so I have to go to three. Please do not use Spore again. Just please. Why did I say anything, dude? I don't know why I talk. All right, I'm out of Awakenings. That's... It shouldn't matter, but... Potentially, I would like one of those. Why is he not attacking? I would like one of those on blue in case I'm asleep and I want to wake up without healing with a full restore which is very situational but very possible I'll just have to play around that I guess so I've got three so fire blast okay and then hyper beam Vaporeon so obviously both fire blast and hyper beam can miss so even with the setup this fight is not so great Good, I got it. All good, all good. Got plenty of health for the next fight, won't have to heal. Okay, equip choice specs. And now I keep choice specs for the rest of the run. I feel like I'm forgetting something, I really do. But I guess that's part of the adventure. We'll find that out later when it comes. <laughs> okay, so this fight, assuming I'm faster than Rapidash, should be pretty free. Uh, it has Flash Fire, so all I can do is use Hyper Beam. Flaffy is going to come out and use Thunder Wave, which is kind of annoying, but it doesn't really do too much damage. So hopefully he comes out, use Thunder Wave. I cure the Paralysis, and then he uses Charge, and then I just kill him while he does nothing. Okay, yeah, so my speed was... Ooh, it's 87. This is so touchy feel. I need to have 80. The rival fight coming up, his Kadabra has 89 speed, 
Why did he use discharge? Why did he paralyze me? This is not good. Now he- uh, Like, it just makes no sense. I'm gonna attack you and then charge up for my next hit. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, so I couldn't use the second paralyze heal there, because if he used discharge and paralyzed me again, it would have all been over, because I only have one more paralyze heal. But luckily that's the last place I can get paralyzed. I think. Nah, no, yeah, it is. It is. It is. So I'm wondering whether to use an XP during this next fight, because I'm going to get a level up before the Kadabra. Oh, this guy is very cute, by the way. He checks all eight badges that I got, and he's like, all right, please go right on through, even though I only have five. <laughs> <laughs> What's even more cute about that is in the original games, in uh, Gold, Silver, Crystal, if you do not have eight badges, he does not let you pass. So they got worse programming the further they got on. <laughs> So obviously the reason they did that is because you can't get up there normally unless you have... Oh, I did not teach strength. Smooth. Unless you have all eight badges because you need the eighth badge to use waterfall to get up there, et cetera, et cetera. But and they just put him there and was like, yeah, I'll check for your badges, but he doesn't do anything. No. No, you would not be able to get past him in this game. At all. Like, this whole run would be completely pointless, pretty much. If that guy wasn't so dumb. <laughs> oh, I missed. I did heal, right? I think I healed. Yes. It's on my memory, god damn. I bought four X speed, so what am I using that on? <laughs> Missed again. All right, so I'm picking up the HP up and the PP up here for money. I don't actually think I can use the X speed. I think I need it to buy five. I think I need to skip this one. Just hope I get three speed on the level up, I guess. Do I get two levels before the Kadabra? No, I don't. I only get one. Jesus Christ, I can't remember anything. Oh, I was on point there and then I messed up. Okay, I'm going to save before this fight though. I'm also going to switch Ekans to the lead. Uh, that's not good. Anyway. to intimidate the Sneasel, to lower his attack. <coughs> I don't actually need to do it here, it just ends up being faster and safer to intimidate the Sneasel. I only need it for Lance. It can also help for Blue, but like I said, Lance is literally impossible if you do not have a Pokemon with Intimidate. So I have four speed. I need one for Blue, I need one for Lance, I need one for Karen, and I need one for Will. So yeah, I can't use one here, because I've only got four. Okay, so Ekans is just fodder, it just falls over and dies. It was just to get the attack drop. Right. Because my special attack is actually really good, I will only need three X specials during this fight instead of four. That's one of the differences between 32 and... 34 X special. Is this fight end well? I'm only going to use three instead of four X specials. Okay, so go to three. How much is he doing? 32. He's doing about 16. Wait. That did 22. All right, lava. This will put me into Blaze because he's faster. And now I should be able to one hit everything he's got. The issue is Kadabra has 89 speed, like I said. So if Kadabra ends up being faster than me, he will be able to kill me. And, like, I don't have any revives or anything because I wouldn't be set up. This might still be a damage range. I'm actually not sure, but hopefully it should go down. That did not even come close. Okay, I need four. Wow. I'm surprised that wasn't even close because every time I tested with the 31 IV, that died. And I either have 30 or 31, so it'd be pretty much the same. This is actually going to make this fight really bad because now I'm going to have to double heal. 
He's doing 22. Nah, I'll only have to single a heal. And I didn't get to find out how much speed I get on the level up. It's now five deaths. All right, I got one more to play with. I did buy two extra X specials for a backup strat on blue. I guess I'll just have to get the good strat on blue. Because I don't trust the three X special on Will now either. Considering this one didn't work. Obviously any critical here at the wrong time is going to kill me because it'll cut out the the attack drop. So he'll do, what is that, like three times as much damage as he's doing right now. I actually think his ability is super luck as well, which is also terrible. Okay, so that's four. So I'm going to super potion now and then go. And I should be fine. 80. See, if I had a regular potion... I would've used that. He's not gonna do enough, is he? 22, mm. nah, he's not gonna do enough. Okay, so, Orenberry, go. Just a waste of turn. And now Lava Plume. All right, now I'm good, now I'm in Blaze. I'll definitely be able to get for Alligator this time. It's just about Kadabra. I'll definitely get at least two speeds, so worst case scenario, it'll be a speed tie. And that's just a 50-50 chance who goes first. Completely roll of the dice. No, okay, I only get one level up. It'll be here. Plus two, it's a speed tie. Oh dear. No, dude, that's terrible. Yep, that's a death. Okay, I'm gonna use the X speed this time because I don't want that to happen again. And then I'm gonna have to not X speed on Will. Will? Hmm, I could cut out Karen as well. All right, that's the last death I'm allowed. Everything else from this point on in this run is gonna be flawless. Except for every single fight. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I know I'm going to have to super potion, so I'm probably going to do it after three instead of after four. Just to take away one turn where he can kill with a critical. It's like I could go another X special here, but I'll do the heal now because I know I'm going to have to at some stage. Now I'm going to be faster than Sneasel, because Sneasel speed is only 94. Is that...? Okay, so that is Blaze. Blaze is exactly 37. So 37 times 3 is 111. So I'm just in Blaze. So I'll be able to get for Alligator, just. But then I'm going to go out of Blaze yeah, when I get the up. level up. But luckily that won't matter, because I only need Blaze for for Alligator, because he's the tankiest dude on his team. So I'll be able to get all the others, even outside of Blaze. I had to think about that for half a second, but this should be fine. I should have to fight this time. In fact, one was okay. I know I've got this fight. All right, it's already won. That took way, way too long, though. 
Yeah, that was unfortunate. So what was the problem with the speed tie? Like why couldn't we foresee that it was gonna be a, a tie? Like why didn't why wasn't your speed higher? Well, why not? wasn't my speed higher? Because this typhlosion is slow. Like like I like I could have gotten well, I, like if I was paying attention to every single stat, I would have known exactly how much speed I was gonna get on that level. But it could have been either two or three on the level up. So I wasn't sure whether it was gonna go to 89 or 90. And I considered the fact that, you know, I didn't want to use an extra X speed because I've only got four and I only want to plan to use it for four fights. Actually, oh, uh, I'm not going to need it for Will. Yeah, I should have used it the first time. But anyway, I, I figured, you know, 25% chance. The worst case scenario, it's a speed tie and then it's a 50-50. So I was thinking, you know, probably a percentage play to not use it. But no, I forgot I get four levels before Zatu, and Zatu has 97 speed, so I will outspeed Zatu, so I do not need the X speed there. I was thinking only three. Yeah, I thought that was going to happen. I knew my repel wasn't on, but it was worth it to try and get there. Not worth it to use repel for like six steps. Just got unlucky. Heal up here. I'm going to use the rare candies straight before <coughs> Will, but I'm going to do that just before I save. I also need to sell the vitamins I got. I'm going to buy three full restores, however many hyper potions I can, and then either one or two full heals. So that'll cover my awakenings. Actually, I'm just going to buy two. So I'll do that first. So I don't have to count money. Oh no, it's on the other side. Oh, I forgot to sell the items, dude. Every time. Okay, that's good. So my items are fine. I just need the good blue fight and everything should be smooth. So I just need the perfect insane. Everything. Okay, my special defense is bad. So this fight could actually be quite tricky because I'm pretty sure, oh, my health is good. I'm worried about whether I take one third damage from psychic after an next special defend, which is gonna be my first turn. If I do, this fight could be very, very bad. If I, what I'm really worried about is it does, the damage range is gonna be like, you know, half my health is 41, so Psychic does, you know, 37 to 45 damage or something. And so I see 37 and I think I'm safe, and then it just does 45 and 45. But okay, I'll probably end up using both X special defense. That's what I've got them for. It's so, okay, 41. So 82 is what I'm looking for. And he's confused, right? How useless. Okay, so I want four specials, no speed. Okay, he went well past it. All right, definitely using both. Two, full restore, then one, then two, and then go. Okay, as long as I don't get a critical here, I should be fine. Even an X, uh, a special defense drop, and I should be fine. Just three. And that's four. All right, and now I'm in Blaze. I should go past 97 speed, which is what his second Zatu has. I'm pretty sure I'll go to 98, actually. Exactly. I've gone to four, so I'm definitely gonna one-hit slow, bro. Oh, it's just about that speed. I get a level up during this fight. 
It's also when I learn Flamethrower, I'm gonna get rid of Flame Wheel and keep Lava Bloom, which is the new strat that I haven't tested out. <laughs> oh, that cry is so long, it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, okay, so I was at 91 at 39. And so I'm assuming I get two, a two, and a three, and that takes me to 98. If they were all twos, I'm at 97, and it's a tie. Okay, 98. See, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Gotta buy one. And Hitmonlee, Bruno's Hitmonlee has 99 speed, so I'll just get Bruno's Hitmonlee as well. Use the one on Karen, Lance, and Blue. Okay, I'm set. Oh good, easy game, easy game. Okay, that's Will. Koga and Bruno are both really, really easy. I'm thinking about not saving before both of them. <laughs> Just, it, nah, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. There's no need to save. I respect that. <coughs> World record of bust. Uh-huh. I do need to heal here though. I mean, we can't, we can't afford to save at this point. Rather no, save. exactly. I've already had all my deaths, it's over. Correct. World record didn't save, like, what would I be doing? <laughs> the glorious world of Pokemon speedrunning. Uh-huh. Okay, so this guy, obviously, like, pretty much all of them have bad type against you. Ariados, you just take out straight away and set up on Foratress. 2x special on this fight and you can one hit everything. The only thing that's faster than you is Crobat. Generally just uses double team, which can be very annoying, but it should be fine. I generally get him first go, so... Oh no, I see. I just wasted an input there because the X special was already on last used item. Yeah, see, Foratress is an idiot. His only attack is Swift and it does like 10 damage. See, that does nothing as well. The only way I could die to Bruno is if Hitmontop uses Dig and it criticals. And if that happens, I'd probably lose like 15 minutes or somewhere around there. Like I'd go back to Will and have to do all three fights again. But I'm pretty confident that's not gonna happen. So I'm not gonna save, it'll be fine. It's not gonna happen. No, that's not gonna happen. All right, so Crobat comes out now. Flamethrower PP isn't really important, so as long as I get him within five turns, this doesn't really matter. See, no, please. Uh oh, here we go. Really? So the, really? More, the more you miss, the higher. Oh, yeah, I got him. I got him. All good. All, all good. Right. All good. All good. All good. <laughs> Obviously, wasted a bit of time, but very minimal. Very minimal. I've got a max ether, which I used before Karen, no matter what. So. That'll take me to full PP. Okay, so Bruno's Hitmontop, you set up on Hitmontop, it either uses Dig or Counter. It generally uses Counter, which is why I'm not Re like, if it always used Dig, I would probably save, but oh, I'm just gonna go in and he's just gonna use Counter and everything will be fine. That's the plan. So, let's say he does Dig and it doesn't uh, critical. I, it's fine. Like, okay. cause I only need two X specials. So, one when he goes underground, one when he attacks, and then I just one hit everything. Pretty much the same as last fight, except Dig does like 70 damage or so, so. A critical would probably put me out of commission. No, 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 it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. I see, easy peasy. Wow, that a crit wouldn't have even killed me. Damn, my defense is good, okay. That actually is gonna save me a bit of time on Lance, now that I know my defense is that good. I generally would throw down three Intimidates on Gyarados, but I'm only gonna throw down two, because my defense is that good. I'm. I believe I'll be able to take 
three waterfalls off only two intimidates. No, nah, I'll still hyper potion. So hyper potion, equip charcoal, and max ether flamethrower. And I'll save before Karen because Karen can be very, very trolly. Her lead is Umbreon. You need to set up to 3x specials on her, and Umbreon is spamming double team. And you have to throw down a Hyper Beam on Houndoom. Gengar comes out. Gengar can, you know, destroy you with Focus Blast, etc. And then Murkrow comes out, and it has Whirlwind. And it has Sucker Punch, which does a surprising amount of damage. Just a lot can go wrong on Karen, so definitely saving before the next two. But yeah, good Elite Four so far. I very, very nearly hit the wrong move there, and that probably would have been run over if I had done that. Okay. And save. 156. Yeah, how's that looking? That is world record pace, actually. <laughs> world record is 158 there, with the same amount of deaths. I'm liking it. But my deaths might have been longer, like you don't know. I actually think my deaths have been pretty short, like just instant reset. Except against the rival, those were pretty lengthy. But we'll see. A lot of it does come down to Blue and Mewtwo. Like, it's ridiculous how much comes down to the very end of the run. But okay. <laughs> 3x specials. And then I have to throw down a Fire Blast to get Umbreon as well. So not only is it increasing its evasion, I'm not even using an accurate move. Two, and that's three. Yeah, I get here. All three double teams. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Uh, payback actually does a surprising amount of damage. Like, that's, that's not chump change. How many have I got left? Two? All right, I'll get the last one then. Dude, no! Uh, I don't even know what to do now. Alright, I'm gonna go into Blaze, and then I can kill him. Alright, so I'm gonna deliberately hurt myself in Confusion here. Beautiful. Like, like you planned? Yeah, and now I'm gonna snap out of Confusion, be in Blaze, and one-hit him. No! No, no, no. Alright, that's gonna kill. Dang. Ah, uh, That's no good. I could have, like, full restored and drew out that fight longer and longer, but it would have taken forever. Like, probably just quicker to reset, because I was probably going to die regardless I mean, yeah, at like that stage. five double teams. Yeah. Oh, it was six. Oh. Got out all six. Which meant it was always going to be attacking as well. And I was out of Fire Blast, so the only way I could one-hit it was if I was in Blaze. And if I don't one-hit it, then would have gotten the full restore, back right. up to full health. It can attack on these first few turns. It just doesn't like to at all. All right, only got two this time. No, no. Yes, thank you. All right, there we go. I didn't X speed. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, cool. I'm gonna be slower than both Houndoom and Gengar, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this is could be a death depending on what Houndoom does. And depending on what comes out first. All right, Houndoom. I want to see nasty plot. I do not want it to attack. All right, excellent. Okay, I should be fine now. Gengar will come out and use Focus Blast and miss. <laughs> no, no, I'll use Spite. No, I'm changing my plan. Oh, all right, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do. <laughs> Oh, there we go. See, I uh, called them both. There we go. All 
All right, that's good because uh, generally Murkrow comes out after you get Gengar and then Houndoom, and Murkrow comes out after the Hyper Beam and uses Whirlwind to phase out all your stat boosts. And then you have to let one of your slaves die and come back in, and it's awful. So that fight was actually not bad. Obviously not great that I had to reset once, but take what you can get. Okay, not bad, not bad. It took a little bit of damage, but I can just super potion that off. Can you taste that? The taste of safe frames by not using that X-Speed? <laughs> As you planned? Yeah, no. It's... <laughs> totally. Okay, so this is the fight I need Ekans for. So switch it to the lead. Uh, I need Specs back on. And heal that little bit of health. So like I said, I'm only gonna double Intimidate. I usually would triple, but my defense is so good I should be fine. I'm like a minute behind world record now with that death. It's all right, we'll get first ball Mewtwo and everything will be fine. All will be good, okay. So yeah, uh, Intimidate, if you don't know, it just reduces the uh, attack stage by one. And uh, Gyarados is a physical attacker. It's using Waterfall. It does like 80% to Typhlosion if you just send it out straight. So it is impossible to set up on Gyarados if you do not Intimidate it. Okay. Switch out to Sentry. And then back to Ekans. I'm also going to use an X Defend on the fight. Uh, the way stages, like attack stages, work in this game is they all go by 0.5. So, like one X Special takes you to 1.5 times boost, and then the next one is two times, and then it's 2.5 times. So that actually means they're getting weaker and weaker the more that you do them. So by using two Intimidates and then an X Defend, I've effectively cut into a third how much damage he's going to do. If I'd used three Intimidates, it would have only been a 2.5 times negation. Uh, what am I doing? So I need five specials. How much did he do? 36. Oh, that's not even close to a third. Ideally, on the last turn, he would be manipulated into using Dragon Pulse. If any of these waterfalls crit, I'm dead, even from full health. So I'm hoping... Oh no, I need to heal right now. Go out of that. I'm hoping that he uses Dragon Pulse here, simply because if Dragon Pulse criticals, I won't die, and the run is still alive. Okay. It d doesn't actually make a difference unless it criticals, but it's just nice to see for a bit of security for those, you know, half a second while you're sweating on the critical. No, 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 not that one, not that one. That would have been very bad. <laughs> okay, so three more, three more. Dragon Pulse, good. Five. And then put in the speed. As long as this one doesn't critical. I'm good, good to go. Easy, got it. All right, all good, all good. Now flamethrower them all. So that's, so it's like five X specials. So that's what, what is that? 3.5 times boost. Then I have obviously stab. That's a 1.5 times boost because I'm using a fire move. Then I have blaze, which is another 1.5 times boost. Then I have the choice specs, which is another 1.5 times boost. So I forget what it is, but it's basically like eight times what the regular power would be so I can actually take out all these guys in one hit. Love it. Like, if you're not in Blaze, this doesn't work. So I need to schedule my health perfectly during that fight, which is why I want exactly between a third and a quarter from Waterfall, which is exactly what I got. This is another one where you can go off only 4x specials if your special attack is really, really good, but Based on what happened with the rival fight, I wasn't really trusting that to work. 
the level 50 Dragonite can stay alive if you only go a four. Now this is just chilling now. They're, they're just statues waiting to fall over. <laughs> Okay, so after Kanto, I'm gonna go to Olivine, uh, take the ship, oh, yeah, take the ship to Kanto. Um, then I'm gonna catch a dark type Pokemon. Then beat blue, get Mewtwo, beat red. There isn't really too much left in the game, but it could take, you know, up, to, up towards, you know, 40 minutes to do those three fights. <laughs> well, let's talk about Mewtwo here. Cause okay. Because, all right, so 1.6%, right? 1.6. No, 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 that was Raikou. Okay. It's 1.6 at like full health, but you can actually weaken Mewtwo. So it's like 4% at good health. That's comforting, right? Yeah. Almost three times. Yeah. yeah. You can get a bunch of Pokeballs there, right? Nah, you buy Dusk Balls in uh, Vermilion City, so I'm going to get like 27 of them. And so uh, I've got a few chances. It'll, it'll be good. I'll get him, don't worry. It's taken several hours before. Yeah. It was like the first time I attempted a run of this, I think I threw over 200 before I actually got him. And then the second run I did of this, I got him on the very first ball I threw. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. It's okay, I'm just waiting for the game to save and then I'm gonna soft reset. It doesn't happen until after the Hall of Fame, so you get to see the pretty cute cutscenes. Always gets me that Ekans is my lead. It's the first one in the Hall of Fame, <laughs> level four. <clears throat> OT Webster, it's so close. It's just that NPC's name. Man, don't even, please. <laughs> Please. It's okay. It saves now after it shows me the game time. I think it'll be 203. 205. Jesus Christ, that's high. That fight takes six minutes. So, yeah, like I said, this game just has individual triggers for just about anything. So if you could get the eighth badge, like, super easily, get straight into the Dragon's Den and then just go to Professor Elm, he would give you the Master Ball. Like, it just does single triggers for just about everything. So beat the Elite Four, you get the SS ticket, you're off the Kanto. And then later on, it's like, when I get to Kanto, all I have to do is beat the final gym badge. And it's like, oh, you've got them all. Because it just decided, oh, to get the last one, you must have all of the rest of them. I've also got a bit of a bone to pick with uh, Olivine City. So what you might be thinking if you've been looking at the tweaking and you've got a bit of a creative mind is, why didn't you just at Olivine City find a tweak to go to, uh, just go to the ship super early and then just take that to Kanto? Like, surely that would be much bigger of a sequence break. Well... You're actually correct, that would be much bigger of a sequence break, and there is a tweak you can do in Olivine City to get to that ship. But unfortunately, the harbor that is sitting underneath Olivine City, even though it has a ship, does not have a ship. That ship is fake, it does absolutely nothing. There is nothing in that area. It is purely cosmetic. Where I'm about to go to the harbor is actually an indoor area next door to Mount Moon. <laughs> Absolutely no idea why, but they just decided to stick this ship near Mount Moon. So unfortunately that doesn't help at all. Yeah, it, it's pretty ridiculous. But I mean, I find it interesting in Pokemon because traditionally it didn't do that. It checked for absolutely everything, but they just got lazier and lazier the later they got with the games. So okay, this guy wants me to find his granddaughter. Oh, I forgot about this fight. No, there, yeah, there's a fight here. 
you just do three flame throws, it's pretty easy. But no, all this part of the run is, is just enjoying this music. Like this music is pretty damn good. This is actually be an all right time for donations as well. There's not much going on for the next couple of minutes. We have a $20 donation from Victor V. <clears throat> Donating for Worcester because he is awesome. Keep up with the mistakes since we already know it's RNG manipulation. $20 from GoldenEye101. Just donating because I've watched Worcester streams for the past year and my mom died of cancer last month. I don't want to see anyone go through what I've been through in the past two months. Shout out to Umbar Error Society. $20 donation from Chrissy Boy again. Good luck, Worcester. Hopefully you'll make Australia proud. Put this toward killing the animals. $50 donation from No Redeeming Value. Both my parents have had and beaten cancer. Hopefully we can get cured before I have to take it on. Money goes to Super Metroid. Save the frames, kill the animals. $55 donation from Anonymous. Thanks to everyone involved for their hard work. $100 donation from Joka. I almost forgot to donate. Awesome event so far. Not looking forward to go home. $50 donation from Blixie. Keep up the good work. What you guys are doing truly makes a difference and it is awesome. $50 donation from LCC. Hoping to see that Sphericite do a Lufia 2 Ancient Cave Run in the bonus stream. This goes towards naming Magus Chrono. My glove fit just won't fit. Hello to the German Alliance. $10 donation from Silver9. Second donation of the marathon. This one is because Typhlosion is the best Pokemon to start with in Gen 2. $20 donation from Lucas Dernitz. Good job, Worcester, and everyone working on the stream. Thanks for doing these every year and putting this towards the New Game Plus run. Excellent. That's all for now. Okay, so now I get off the ship. I'm actually going to do a very small time saver where I'm going to switch Kenya to the lead before I... Oh, there's another small time saver I'm going to do at the same time. So once I dock in Vermilion City, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly to Vermilion City from Vermilion City just so I don't have to go through the port. But before I do that, I'm going to switch Kenya to the lead so I get a different animation. And also because Kenya is what I'm going to use to weaken either the Murkrow or the Hound Hour that I catch... I'm catching a dark type Pokemon because dark types don't get affected by psychic. And the next two Pokemon that I'm gonna, wow, uh, really dance with is gonna be Exeggutor and Mewtwo. Mewtwo only has psychic moves, so it makes it much easier to catch by having a dark type. So it can't just simply wipe your party. Oh, I forgot to buy an escape rope. Can only buy 27. Uh, and it also makes the Exeggutor fight, which is blue, much, much easier because his only two attacking moves are Psychic and Leaf Storm. And Leaf Storm lowers his special attack two stages, so it makes it feasible to actually set up on him because it forces him to use it because he reads that Leaf Storm will kill and Psychic won't, so he always uses Leaf Storm over any move that he has. Okay, so I have to go to the left. I think it's 30% to get, like it's 25 for Murkrow and 5 for Houndour, if I recall. And this is also why the time was actually very specific during the run. It has to be night time by this point in the run, but it can't be night time earlier on in the run because Sentret doesn't appear at night and because the policeman will actually fight you at night. So you want it to turn to night, like, while you're in the Elite Four or so. A night switches at 8 p.m. in this game, so I start at about 6 p.m. Generally pretty safe, both sides. There we go, and there's my Murkrow. And also because dust balls work well at night, it just couples really well. <coughs> mm. 
Wow. Wow. <laughs> that bait and switch. Nah, this guy is not meant to be hard at all. And I don't want to be losing any balls for Mewtwo at all, so... Wow! Alright, so that wasn't too bad. So now I'm actually going to do another tweak uh, east of Saffron just to skip a trainer. This is going to be another load tweak, but this one is a bit stupid. The reason this actually skips a trainer is not because it like deloads the trainer or because you walk around the trainer. The reason this works is because it creates an invisible wall in front of the trainer so his vision gets skewed so he can't see you. Oh, Jesus, I wasn't trying to do that. Yep. Okay. So as you can see, that's the void. I still have to cut this bush, otherwise I can't go in there. But just go straight ahead. This is totally in this guy's line of vision. He would see me, but there's an invisible wall right in front of him. Okay, switch Teflosion back to the front. Couple that with bringing the map back up. Over here. And now I'm going to do another running tweak to deload Snorlax. Uh, this one, the way running tweaks work is you need it to not be loaded before you actually do the tweak. So it needs to be simultaneous with loading the screen. So if I mess this up once, I have to reload the whole area. And this is one for whatever reason that I am really poor at. I mess this one up a bunch. So it's a, the same tweak as the one before. It's one, two, three, four, three. Oh, okay. I didn't go over the line, so I can try again. Oh, I didn't go over the line. All right, I got it. <laughs> All right, and so there was like three trainers there and a Snorlax, but they're just completely gone, and now straight into Diglett's Cave. I'm going to pick up the Max Revive in here for the alternate strat that I can do on blue, just in case I die to Arcanine, which is a very real possibility. And if I don't die to Arcanine, that Max Revive is then useful for the red fight. Ooh, that's not good. All right, I'm going to use another one. There's also a bit of grass that I generally don't use a super repel for, just outside here in Viridian. Because it's only like four patches, but this will cover both, so I figure it's worth it there. Oh, I was not meant to go that early. I do that every time. It's ridiculous. Okay, so this one is a bit weird. I can't do this tweak just walking into Viridian City. I have to reload Viridian City. Uh, the quickest way to do that is to just enter this building and come back out. So this is actually the same pattern as a load tweak. Uh, I was talking to Ecast about this and he kind of doesn't know why this worked, but okay, hold up. Oh. No. No. Oh, that. Oh, almost. Dude, I'm bad. I'm bad! That was it, and then I'm stuck. No! I'm stuck! <laughs> no. Okay, I can... You, you can fly, fly. No, no, I cannot fly. I'm pretty sure if I access any of my menus, the game will freeze, which is a side effect of this one right here. I actually have to save and reset. This is where that is. So I'm gonna save and reset just to be safe. Because I thought that once during a run, I was like, dude, I'd like switch my Pokemon, it'll all be fine. And then the game froze. I couldn't even reset the game. I had to turn off the whole console. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> but no, I, I should be good now. I actually got it and then I just pulled out thinking I'd missed it. Uh, uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I can, I, now I actually think I am stuck. No. I don't think so. Maybe? Let's see. Okay, I can. All right. All good. All good. We're fine. All yeah. Dude, why am I bad at this? 
There we go. All right. So for whatever reason, doing the tweak there messes up your z-axis and you just kind of go underground. If I walked into the, like, this is what I'm worried about. If I walk into the gym now, if I access any of my Pokemon already in my bag, the game just completely freezes. But by saving right in front of the gym, resetting, I can just walk straight into the gym. And that skips every single battle in Kanto. Just all of them. <laughs> and then I just go straight to blue, and then it's like, you completed the game. Have fun with red. All right, there we go. It just assumes I'm there on the first tile for whatever reason. Okay, I'm also going to save in front of Blue, even though he's only like 20 seconds away, just because I expect to die to this guy like 15 times or so. This is by... F oh, I hit the wrong thing. This is by far the most difficult fight in the game, and I've already died seven times. So, yeah. Like I was mentioning before, I need to set up five X specials. I need to set up an X speed. Oh, I need to get him to use Leaf Storm twice before any of this can happen. Then I have to set up two X defense, and then I have to negotiate my health between 25 and 32% of my maximum so that I will be in Blaze, but I'll be able to survive an extreme speed from Arcanine. So I'll be able to one-hit all of his Pokemon. So it's very, very, very specific. And Exeggutor is using Trick Rune, which if you don't know what that does is it uh, makes the slow Pokemon go first. So he uses that pretty much whenever he can. So I need to be on that health. The turn Trick Room wears off. Otherwise, he'll use Trick Room and completely mess everything up. I also have to be awake, and he can use Hypnosis. And Hypnosis can miss, so I can't count on him using Hypnosis and it hitting. And Psychic can get a special defense drop. And if Psychic criticals at any stage, I die. So I'm going to switch out so Mercro stays alive. Given all those situational uh, tendencies there, is there like a percentage for what, for everything going right the first try? It would be impossible to calculate that percentage. <laughs> Let's just say 100 and I get it. <laughs> okay. One, so there's the trick room. Two. There's the Hypnosis. Three. So he's always going to get off at least two Trick Rooms, because you've got to set up seven items. That did more than a third. Uh, that is not good at all. Wow, okay. I can still do this, but that is absolutely dreadful. I did not think my special defense was going to be that bad. No, that should not be doing a third. Like, that wouldn't have killed, but it was a damage range. So I couldn't <coughs> let him hit me with another Psychic and risk dying. So I've got the five specials out now. Oh, yeah, speed. So I want Hypnosis miss. Perfect. I don't know what I want this turn. Hypnosis miss, I think. Okay. I need a regular potion, I don't have one. Damn it. All right, orange berry. Because now Trick Room wears off, and now I can go. Unfortunately, I'm going to die from an extreme speed from Arcanine. But my defense is so good, my plan is to wear him off with Super Potions so that I slowly go up to the point where I can survive an extreme speed. Solid plan. That was actually a really quick setup. Like, getting it off the second Trick Room is as fast as you can be because you need to do more than five turns of setup. I got off the speed, so I'm definitely fast on the burst of them. Both Arcanine and Pidgeot have 118 speed, and I'm at 115, so needed the speed. Okay, so I think extreme speed is going to do around 35. 
It actually might do a bit less. Hopefully if it does less, then I'll be able to take two off just one super potion, because it's going to take me to 70. Yeah, no, I think it'll do less. I've decided it'll do like 32 maybe. So obviously 35 is the half, that's the cutoff. 40, lovely. Lovely, I'm good, I'm good. That was pretty much a perfect fight. Now that went insanely well. And these two are definitely gone, because I'm still in Blaze. Now I just gotta get that 4% on Mewtwo. Easy peasy. All right, so let's talk world record here. Okay. So, uh, so we're one death further in than the world record has currently. Yes. Assuming Mewtwo, Mewtwo goes perfect, that would that would. That I, would I bring assume it back. so. Like, what is my time right now? Two thirty-seven forty-six. Uh, assuming with stream delay. So. Okay, so I've got like eighteen minutes. I mean, if it goes perfectly, this would take like eight, and I'd beat it by like ten minutes. So. <laughs> Okay, all right. So if I, we'll just get Mewtwo first ball and water record right here. Easy peasy. Easy. Unfortunately, if I get Mewtwo, you know, 418th ball, <laughs> I might go two hours over estimate, but. <laughs> Dude, more like free to. Like, let's get it. Uh, okay, so Murkrow is still in the lead. So what I've actually done a few times is I've had Murkrow not be alive and I've had Sentred in the lead here and I use the Super Repel to not get encounters, forgetting that Sentred is like level two and it does absolutely nothing. Even when, which is ironic because the encounters here are literally level two. Oh wow, every time she gets me. NPCs, man. It's okay. Talk to Oak, get rock climb, and then off to Cerulean Cave. Cerulean Cave is actually very difficult to navigate because it's in the dark, and like it, it's a lot of very sharp turns, like really quickly, like really narrow paths, not very open at all, and just random rocks everywhere. So there will be about 200 bumps into the wall. You just got to deal with that. Oh, it's like the part where you like YOLO blind navigate without flash. Yes. Hype. Actually, I need to Heagle type Flusion, but I will do that when I save at Mewtwo. Because Typhlosion right now is going to die in one hit from Mewtwo, and I need it to at least do some damage. Well, I don't need it to. I could just chuck a ball at full health, but it's probably not the wisest decision I would make. So again, I'm gonna bump into a wall right here just to slow myself down because you cannot uh, use items while you are in movement. You actually have to stop to use the menu. So if you're using repels in an area where you're going from not grass to grass, it's quicker to just run into a wall to slow yourself down. Okay. My repel count is exactly spot on. I don't have one to spare. So if I mess up the movement here, I'm Gonna get 800 encounters at Mount Silver. Oh. Nope. Ah, that's. An, did I just really? Wow, okay. But yeah, this floor is extremely narrow. <laughs> I 
think I'm going to be one short, actually. I don't think I'm going to make this to Mewtwo. I might still be able to make it with to uh, Mount Silver, because I'm pretty sure the Repel will carry over. Which way do I go in this room? Oh, dear. Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. It's all good. It's all good. Well, well that's not right. Okay, all right. I kind of know where I'm going. I'll get there eventually. This is all RNG manipulation for Mewtwo, so it's all good. Yep, okay. So Mewtwo's just around the corner. I'm actually gonna heal right now. So, the new strat I was talking about is, usually I weaken Mewtwo with Flamethrower, and it does like, you know, around about 40% of its health, so I hit it twice and then I start chucking balls. But my plan this time is, I'm actually gonna use Lava Plume instead of Flamethrower, which is gonna do slightly le- Wow, I'm not even looking. It's gonna do slightly less damage, but it's got a higher chance of burning him. And a burn adds a 1.5 times multiplier to the catch rate, so on the last turn when he's just about to die from burn, I'll have a 6% chance of catching him instead of a 4% chance. I can roll with that. Yeah, uh, I'm feeling pretty good about that, actually. And obviously I save because if I run out of balls, I do need to reload. He's using Amnesia. Like, this guy, the amount of damage you do is so variable. He not only has Amnesia, but he has Guard Swap, which just gets rid of his special defense boosts. Psycho Cut, that's going to do, like, 80%, put me in the Blaze. That's actually not Blaze, it's one-off. I'm just not getting this. I'm dead, dude. That's terrible. Uh, I don't know if I want to, like... Uh, Alright. Instead of resetting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to max revive. I can get the other max revive later if I get him this ball. Like, I don't just want to reset just because I didn't do enough damage. Send it back out there, do a bit more damage. Alright, nice. Killed Kenya straight away. That was actually really good. Because I wasn't sure whether I wanted to switch back or not. All right. Okay. All right, that one is Blaze. All right, there's the burn. All right, so I probably got three balls because I got the burn, but they're at a much higher chance. The fast ball has a times four multiplier if the Pokemon has a base speed of more than 100, which Mewtwo does. Uh, and the dust ball is 3.5 times if it's in a cave or at night, which this is in a cave. So I only have one fast ball, so I chuck that first, and then just all dusks. See, I only get three chances, I'm pretty sure, considering I burned him. Oh, Jesus. I might get four. I'm not sure. I think it's only three. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Oh, uh, he might live one more turn. Maybe. I'll just get him this throw, so it'll yeah. all be good. What a hacker, dude. Oh, dang. Yep, that's a reset. All right. Uh, round one. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Don't even. So when you do catch Mewtwo, he's going to be your starter from here on out, or...? But there's only one more battle left, but beating Red without Mewtwo is pretty much impossible. Like, impossible. Pikachu just one-hits everything. Because it has a light ball, it just one-hits everything. All right, we got the burn first turn. That's much better, so I get a few more throws this time. <coughs> do I get, what is it, like, six or something? Yo! Dude, wait, world record pace! I need the name. Free chat. 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 Oh, I'm just doing all caps. Free chat. That's good. <laughs> Oh, and it's got a space, dude. We're doing this right now. 
I have two escape ropes. What am I doing, dude? This is... This is your world record holder right here, folks. <laughs> All right, there is one more potential issue. If Mewtwo has a minus speed nature, he will be slower than Pikachu. Even Mewtwo dies in one hit to Pikachu. If I have a minus speed nature, I don't know how I'm going to beat Red. I really don't. I'll figure something out, I'm sure. But I, I don't know what it is at the moment. Man, I, I, got, I, got, I got this, I got this, I got this. I actually did forget, to be honest, but I, I got this now. It's fine. Okay, so I'm getting the rare candy because obviously I want Psychic, and it just so happens Mewtwo learns Psychic at level 71, and it's faster to get that rare candy than to, say... Get the TM for Psychic. It's so, okay, Super Repel. Uh, rare Candy. So, okay, I can check speed here. Pikachu speed is 190. 210. Alright, I'm good. I'm good. All good. Okay, my nature is Calm. That's actually really good. That's one of the best natures you can get. Because attack is obviously useless and special defense is actually surprisingly useful. Okay, Full Restore. Uh, rock climb. Uh, calm. Okay. And then take the choice specs off Typhlosion and give them to me too. I, I'll do that later. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Alright. I also used the Max Revive earlier. No, I didn't do that because I reloaded that save. I still have the Max Revive. Yeah, because I got it like first ball. Yeah, so now nah, I'm good, I'm good. Because there's another Max Revive I could get in here. There's actually two I could get it in here. And I do need a Max Revive for the red fight. It's actually planned for Mewtwo to die on Snorlax. I could get two and just get one as a backup, but... I ain't that much of a pussy, so. <laughs> okay. Oh dear. <laughs> Person with my pussy confirmed. <laughs> like I can't hear that, dude. Like. <laughs> 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 All right, yeah, last repel. I didn't think about that. Uh, the other thing I guess I should explain, the last thing before red, is there are certain dates. Uh, this fight, it's meant to hail, but hail is really, really time consuming. So there are certain dates where it does not hail. The one I use is March 15th. I don't actually know what the significance of this date is. I found it by accident. It's your birthday? Yeah. Oh. Well, I, I'm sure Nintendo planned that just for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I got it. I got it, dude. I got it. Now, I'm planning to do it with the save just before red. It's all good. save just in case because you I can die here if uh, Snorlax or potentially not Lapras because I have a good uh, good special defense because I got a good nature he probably can't kill me from full with the crit but uh oh Ekans is dead maybe oh yeah that that's not right Ekans is meant to be alive I can still do this but there is a better strat that I'm meant to use with Ekans Go free chat. I love that line. Yeah, it's just it. so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Snorlax takes three hits. He'll kill me in two, so I'm just going to throw down two psychics. 
And then when he kills me, Max revive Mewtwo, then put on the X special, and then put on two more X specials on Lapras, and then with three X specials, I can just roll the rest of his party. It, his AI is actually ridiculous. He has Crunch, Giga Impact, and Shadow Ball. He can use any of the three. Uh, he generally uses Giga Impact when he's at lower health. I don't even know who I want to send out. I'll just send out you. <laughs> See, I meant to send out Ekans here and lower his attack a little bit. And that generally gets uh, Giga, lures out Giga Impact as well. So I can get two X specials off on Snorlax. See what happens. Use Blizzard, that is bizarre because Blizzard can miss. Like, just very dumb. Special. But yeah, as you can see, I only have three and I need all three. So if I die, ah, I got crunched. That's not good at all. <clears throat> Okay, so now I have to get the other two on Lapras. Lapras is probably going to do 100. 100, 100 with uh, Blizzard. 100. So I'm going to heal. No, look. <laughs> I mean 100 plus, man. Just, just settle down. <laughs> <laughs> but now, because Mewtwo has pressure, he only gets three Blizzards. I've got enough healing items to stall him out, even if he does over half. I don't think he's going to do over half. And Blizzard can miss, obviously. Oh wow, he did over half. Surprising. Okay. So I might have to stall him out or wait for the miss. Unlucky? Alright. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Alright, I just realized. I think this Labras has Body Slam. I actually don't have any four restores left, and Body Slam can paralyze you. So. That would be pretty awkward if that happened. All right, there we go, there we go. All good, all good, all right. Special. Two. Uh, mm. All right, all right, all right, all right. Here we go, here we go. This is it. This is all, uh, all good, you just gotta trust me. Brian, all right, all good. All right, we in there. All right, that's game over. Four psychics and that'll be red down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time ends when uh, the last text of red, uh, the like dot dot dots, when that text box gets cleared. <laughs> Chad is insane right now, by <laughs> so you know. Oh. Oh. We got to request some Kevin Turtle spam? Nah, -uh, nah. -uh. We're good? Mm. Yeah, I get the level up as well, so. All right, so that's time there. 255.55. Wow. <laughs> so legitimately, if you guys had donated for the names to be I, I would have gotten world record. <laughs> but nah, overall that was a pretty solid run. I'm pretty happy with that. That's Soul Silver. Phenomenal, man. Absolutely phenomenal. Seven seconds. This game sucks. <laughs> Yeah, that means
Mewtwo King capture was clutch. Yeah, no, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. No, that was really good fun. Like, it's it's a really fun, rewarding run to do. Like, you really feel like you're accomplishing something. It's just RNG up the yeah, dude, You're so low leveled. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it is. When you were explaining the criteria for the for the setup, like seven turns of setup. I think oh, it it's actually eight. Eight. I'm sorry, eight, eight turns of setup. Yeah, yeah, that's with like at what like five different conditions that could all go wrong. Uh huh. <laughs> Is that all entirely your route? This is all like your route? Yeah, yeah, this was my route. So Ecast has actually helped a lot with this game. He helped a lot with like the tweaking and the investigating, but he was doing a route using the Red Gyarados as his main Pokemon, but it, it's super slow. It's a lot more consistent, but it's a lot slower than this one. But yeah, like a, a really optimal run of this would be like 230 odd, like maybe 220. But doing this run without dying is just insanely ridiculous. So relevant to your stream, you don't own a copy of Soul Silver, right? No, I only have Heart Gold. Uh, so how? Hmm. So you're gonna be able to like do well in Heart Gold? Yeah, a Heart Gold is fine. It, it's very conditional. Like you can just get a Growlithe or a Stantler. They're just a bit harder to catch. I mean, if you're really lucky, like it ends up being just as fast to get huh. whichever one. So, yeah, Soul Silver's just a bit more consistent. I think on the first day I got here, because I figured out Soul Silver was more consistent about two days before I left here, I had five people, I've got Soul Silver! Run this, please! <laughs> it was really cute. I think it was Count Nico's card that I ended up using because he was the first, so shout out to him, I guess. But yeah, that's the end of the game. So hope you enjoy watching. We have a $500 donation from Pegasaurus. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day we can live in a world that is free from the terrible scourge that is cancer. Thanks to efforts like this, that dream may someday become a reality. Shoutouts to all the runners, commentators, donation readers, tech staff, and volunteers who have worked so hard to make this amazing event happen. Have a hundred dollar donation from Riz. Love seeing some Pokemon. Keep up the awesome work, guys. Okay. It's just regular punch out, or is it super punch out there? Just tell me when we're good. Give us a moment, we're gonna cut the stream quickly. We'll be right back.